All right, I'll go ahead and call the, uh, the November 9th, 2022 Nottingham Planning Board meeting to order. Um, before we get, into, get started and introduce everybody, I'd just like to request anybody, uh, there's a sign-in sheet at the back. If you have not signed in, please do so. It's just we use it for the minutes uh, to record who was who here in attendance. Um, other than that, I will start uh, with introductions, starting with uh, Ms. Jones on my right. Sandra Jones, alternate. <coughs> Robert Davies, alternate. Gary Anderson. John Morn. Ian McKinnon. Edward Veal. Susan Mooney. Charlene Anderson. Blair Haney, SRPC. And uh, Ms. Jones will be seated in voting for uh, Ms. Sandler tonight. I believe I have the mm -hmm. correct order on that one. Uh, all right. Uh, we will just jump right in and take items in the. Uh, in the order that they're on there before before I guess the public hearings the only other thing I would like to say is uh, it was a big day yesterday for elections it was a very long night for town officials and uh, election workers and volunteers so uh, big thank you to everybody that both voted and um, and, and volunteered and, and worked those elections it, uh, it takes a lot to, to, to streamline that and get it all together so thank you everybody um, so now we'll jump right in uh, we have three continued cases tonight. The uh, first is case number 22-011-SUB, uh, application from Jones Beach Engineering on behalf of Jim Rosborough, requesting 11 lot subdivision, property located on Moores Road in Nottingham, identifies tax map 72, lot 13-1, uh, and this application does have a conditional use permit or permits uh, applied for as well. Mr. Dyer, if you could just... Uh, Yep. Introduce yourself and then update us as to where we are. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is This Bear. one. Oh, sorry. No. This one just because I have to So, uh, Mr. McKinnon has recused from this case uh, as he has in the past. Uh, so, Mr. Davies will be seated in uh, participating and voting uh, for, this, for this case. Once again, good evening. My name is Barry Geyer. I'm with Jones & Beach Engineers here for the applicant. Um, Unfortunately, we weren't, we were unable to be heard by the Raymond Planning Board last time. That's kind of what we were waiting for. Um, they had wanted to get some input from their uh, engineer and weren't able to do it before the meeting, but thought we would still come tonight and try to be productive um, with the uh, additional discussion. Um, just to recap, the existing proposals for the development of 11 uh, lot open space subdivision uh, we are proposing the protection this includes the the protection of 34.92 acres of open space where 27.43 acres is required so that's 27 percent greater than is required uh, that includes 20.29 acres of buildable open space where 13.71 is required so that's 48 percent larger than is required um, the project does require three conditional use permits uh, the first is to allow the elimination of the 100-foot landscape buffer. The second is for a wetland impact associated with the culvert replacement on Moores Road. And the third was to allow lot sizes greater than 45,000 square feet. So at, at the last meeting, there was some discussion regarding the ability to provide the 11 lots without granting of the third conditional use permit that allows lot sizes greater than 45,000 square feet. Um, to that end, we have provided some handouts, which I will pass out. <clears throat> So the first sheet is just the current proposed C2, and I just wanted to include this as a comparative to the second sheet, which we're calling option A. And uh, option A depicts the slight modifications to lots four through nine, which were the lots that were on C2, you can see are greater than 45,000 square feet. And that we've revised them slightly to make them less than 45,000 square feet, which would then not require the conditional use permit. Um, no portion of any of the lots is less than 50 feet in width, and actually 
I think none of them are less than 60 feet in width. So you can see that we're actually able to develop basically the same layout without the conditional use permit and get the same number of lots. That was the, really the, the intent of this um, option A plan. Now, if you flip to option B, so that has, uh, again, I'm sorry, option A continues to have two lots south of uh, or north of the uh, large wetland and basically south of the, the lots that are there along Moores Road. Um, option B, lots four through seven are the same as option A. Uh, but in this one, you can see lot nine is re relocated closer to the lake within the access between uh, map 72, lots eight and 10. So there is an access to this property between lots seven and 10 that are close to the intersection. So we included this option due to the comments regarding the location of lot nine in our proposal, C2. Um, the comment was that lot nine was located, you know, kind of in the center of the open space. Um, we had relocated lot nine in our proposal to keep the space between, on C2, between um, lot nine and lot um, 72, lot five. So we actually adjusted that to push it away from lot 70 or map 72, lot five. But if the board prefers this option, uh, the, the applicant is open, is not opposed to it. So I just wanted to bring this to the board, show them you know, that we are able to meet the requirements without the conditional use permit, which would be option A. We're still requesting the conditional use permit. But then if the board prefers option B, then the applicant <laughs> isn't opposed to it. Now, it's our opinion that the current proposal, which is shown on C2, is the best compromise. Some of the lots are a bit bigger, but this allows some flexibility in the house location, the septic location, et cetera. Um, we only have two houses, which are north of the wetland, and we provide open space between the existing homes and the proposed homes. So we think that's a good op option. Um, in addition, the applicant is providing open space in excess of that is required. So with that, we can take questions regarding, I mean, I'd be happy to take questions regarding this, or we can go through the conditional use permits, whatever the board would like to do. All right, thank you. Um, was, there any, was there anything new submitted that, that you uh, reviewed that you wanted to or input for on this case? No, I did not see anything new that was submitted prior to the meeting, so there was no nothing commented on. We did get a letter from, uh, so as part of the, the development of regional impact, I believe there was a request that comment be received from Lamprey, Lamprey River Advisory Committee. I just received a letter <coughs> uh, yesterday, so I only, I only saw it today um, from them. It was just dated yesterday. And Mr. Guy, I don't think, I didn't see you cc'd on this by them, so I'll, I'll print an extra copy. Thank you. <coughs> so I'll read the items that were listed in there. This is from, uh, signed by Joseph Foley, the chair. <clears throat> the, thank you for contacting Lamprey River Advisory Committee regarding a proposed subdivision on Moores Road. Individual committee members have reviewed the plan sheets and we offer the following preliminary comments. Uh, there are many wetlands on site, but are, not, but are not able to discern the ecological functions that they are serving without additional information from a functional assessment by a wetland scientist. Some wetlands are more valuable than others. Uh, no Natural Heritage Bureau report was available. These reports are essential for a proper review. No site photos or aerial views were, were provided. Uh, skepticism was noted on the yield plan due to the very long driveways. We assume that one of the main purposes of an open space subdivision is to conserve the valuable natural resources on the property. Have those valuable natural resources um, to be protected been identified? We would like to see the important natural features of the property identified first, and then the subdivision built around those. What will be the disposition of the open space? The usual options are a conservation easement, deeding the property to a conservation organization, deeding it to the town with deed restrictions, or the worst case, having it owned by a homeowner's association with deed restrictions. How will the open space be used by the subdivision, and will it be available for recreation or set aside as a protected wildlife area? Thank you for the opportunity to offer preliminary comments on this proposed project. And, uh, get that to you see, because I know I read that. And I can have a copy for it too. So that was um, 
from LRAC, Land River Advisory Committee. Um, and again, the applicant has just received that tonight, so we just received it yesterday, so there's not been a chance to um, go over additional items. Um, one item I had, or two couple things, I think, so I had questioned the, the yield plan um, previously just about possibly being a bit high. And as I was looking back at it, the, uh, when you look at the yield plan, specifically the proposed lot eight, that one wouldn't be necessarily buildable as designed without a conditional use permit because it would have to fill wetlands. Um, in general, when we have yield plans, it's, it's lots that can be built um, that meet our zoning. So that one wouldn't necessarily meet our zoning because the only way it could ever be built would be if it had a conditional use permit. Um, same thing with like lots 10, 9, and 10. The, the driveway couldn't be on the, uh, potentially couldn't be on the, the shared lot line, but lot, the proposed lot eight in the yield plan, as I re-reviewed it, um, flag to me. And the reason I was looking back at, at, at that is one of the items we'd requested was, um, so we had to send comment to the, to the building inspector for them to work with DES to determine whether or not the stream that comes, that we have on town maps is a first order stream, whether or not it is a first order stream or, uh, or not. <clears throat> and the, one of the items that was submitted to us for that was the, the um, a review from GZA Environmental. And I couldn't print it, it was locked, Mr. Geyer. I don't know if that's just something that they do on their behalf so, you, so they can't. Um, get it but I noticed that there was there were a number of potential vernal pools flagged on the property including one back back there I think there was five or six um, potential vernal pools that were were flagged um, and then I noticed that that, that wetland actually continued and, that, and that's why I was checking the setback of it um, so so from my initial opinion on the yield is that it's at least one lot too large. And when I look at the, the potential, the, what was submitted to us tonight with the alternative A and B, um, where lot nine is getting, would potentially be moved to, it doesn't seem like it'd be feasible because the uh, septic is being shown in an area that's extremely steep um, and is flagged as steep slopes. And the only way to access that would be, you know, I don't, I don't know that a, that a driveway could be graded safely. To, the, to our grade recommendations uh, requirements to be able to actually place a house uh, in that location. In B. On B, correct, yeah. <clears throat> I just remember walking in that site and everybody trudging up that hill and we did see test pits at the top of that, which was, um, in my opinion, you know, strange that, that those were placed right, at, right on a slope like that. Yeah, well, we're not proposing option B. That was just one that we wanted to, to show in case the board was uh, would prefer that, you know, uh, location of that house. But we're really looking at the preferred location of lot nine was where it is on C2. And I know that there was comments regarding the location of it in the open space. Well, the intent of that was to provide some space between lot nine and, <clears throat> and map 72 lot five. Originally we had it, the lot lines basically adjacent to each other. Yeah. I guess regarding the, the yield plan, I mean, I disagree with your assessment. I think the uh, a small wetland impact for 11 lots would probably go through the board without much issue even though it would use, uh, require a conditional use permit. And the applicant is, would like to do the open space subdivision. If pushed to do it, he will revert to a standard subdivision in which even if there are fewer lots, there won't be any protection for, or any additional protection that the open space would provide for any of that area. Mr. Chair, um, the rest of us on the board don't, are not privy to where these 
um, rental pools might be located. Well, the information we have. They're they're highlighted. They're depicted on the existing conditions plan. They're pointed out. you look within the wetlands, there's a, uh, a different color. There's a, a darker purple, and the line is labeled vernal pool line. I don't know where I should be looking. Um, is this the information you gave us today I should be looking at? No, or sorry, previous? from the original package. Okay. Have It was labeled as the existing dish C1. C1. That's the easiest location. So if you see, we have the vernal pools highlighted here. Um, the purple is the vernal pools. So there's vernal pools in several of the locations. Okay. And th okay, so those are shown on <clears throat> on this smaller set that we have tonight. C two. It looks like it, I see the same color. Yeah, it's, they're easier to see on C one, but oh, this is the one from last they are last showing one. on the other sheets as well. And the setbacks are shown on the plans. All the setbacks required by the rubber pool. And that's the same. That, that potential lot eight on the yield plan. That's one of the ones that's got that large potential vernal pool um, in it. So that's not only just a wetland Im impact; it could potentially be a vernal pool buffer that that we can't we can't waive on, on this board as a conditional use permit. But again, it's hard to go back and forth to see um, from yield to, to that whether or not that's we can I can clarify that on our next mission. But regardless, in general, I mean, in general, on our yield plans, it's, I have not, I can't remember to date one where we allowed potential loss to be shown that would require additional action being a variance or a conditional use permit. Again, that's from memory. I could have to go back and look. But generally, yield plans are designed for what can be built um, through the current subdivision process. And I understand what your, your, your point is that you, know, you, you feel that the well land impact would be potentially pretty minor. Um, I don't know the total number of feet that are in that, but it's still a wetland impact. So whether it's 10 feet or 1,000 feet, it would still have to have a conditional use permit. Do have any kind of dredge and fill beyond, besides the state permit? And going back to the intermittent stream, first order stream question, so that has not yet been, um, I believe, I believe you'd, you'd submitted the material back to the building inspector code enforcement uh, about a, less than a week ago or so. Um, so I've not had, had a response from, from him as of yet for determination. <clears throat> Was there an additional comment from the board? Um, I, I prepared a, um, a document I'd like to read tonight. As I, I was grateful to the fact that we had these extra two weeks to just think about things and, and let them settle in rather than um, doing a, a knee-jerk um, response when we get new information right at the meeting. So just thinking about um, cases we've had in the past, particularly dealing with um, open space and also with um, something, well, I'm talking about the open size, but that's not an option anymore. So with your indulgence, I'd like to read this. 
Hopefully you can hear me through my mask. This is co these are comments regarding this case, history and rationale for the open space development design. It's an option instead of a conventional minimum two acre lot size with adequate envelope for the building site. In the zoning ordinance, article four, section S, the statement of purpose, and this is almost um, verbatim. This ordinance was created by the direction recommended in the master plan to preserve open space by encouraging flexibility in the design and development of land to preserve open space, greenways, rural character, retaining and protecting, protecting important natural, historic, and scenic resources while providing for a more efficient use of land and promoting the development of balanced residential communities in harmony with the natural landscape. I was one of the people in Nottingham who worked with a professional planner to design this ordinance for Nottingham. In 2001, the first large subdivision was proposed in town. Over 100 units were eventually built. At that time, each lot was required to be at least two acres minimum with 30,000 square feet of contiguous buildable area. This is the garrison development that front stage road at Francesca Way and Poor Farm Road. An extensive infrastructure of nece necessary internal roads and services ultimately consumed the parent parcel. It caught our attention. Within 10 years, the town approved the open space development, OSD, as an alternate design. It's a win-win. At least 50% of the parent partial parcel shall be open space and not more than 50% of that open space shall include non-buildable areas such as wetlands, vernal pools, steep slopes. The, development, the developer is able to configure <coughs> so to concentrate the homes and therefore it is not necessary to build interior roadways, saving the developer that expense. Within the OSD, Section 5, Number 10, Protection and Management of Open Space. One or more of these options for the designated open space area are subject to planning board approval. A, conservation easement D, <coughs> conveyed to a land trust who would monitor the open space on an annual basis for compliance. Or B, an easement deed conveyed to the town. The land conveyed shall be open for public use. C, common area was not proposed by the developer, so I didn't copy that. D, the developer is responsible until such a time as the, as the homeowners association is capable of assuming such responsibility. The planning board shall require the applicant to provide documentation that this association is a mandatory association that has been established prior to the conveyance of any lots within the subdivision. E, documents should be placed on file with the clerk. F, design guidelines shall conform to the standards set in the subdivision regs. Monitoring, the applicant shall provide sufficient funds as a one-time stewardship fee if the town will be responsible for compliance. There are other major subdivisions in Nottingham that have lands protected by easements or deed restrictions. These are annually monitored by a homeowners association or a third party. The Highlands development on Old Turnpike Road contains 19 properties with deed restrictions filed with the Rockingham County Registrar of Deeds in order to protect critical wetlands at the Little River watershed. The town of Nottingham has monitored these properties since 2010 annually. Brook Crossing, also located along Old Turnpike Road and with frontage along the Little River, has areas that were set aside and these areas are monitored by the Rockingham County Conservation District, RCCD. These sensitive areas are also included in the Little River watershed. The garrison development mentioned earlier has protected areas also monitored by RCCD. I suggest that only having restrictions written into the individual deeds with the Morse development and not by assigning and not and by not assigning a third party or an HOA to monitor the designated open space on a regular basis will encourage activities not consistent with the open space model to occur. I envision 
people going out and cutting firewood for their fireplaces or for a bonfire. I envision people gathering Winterberry Harley and the like for holiday decorations rather than leaving them for the wildlife. I envision homeowners spraying chemicals for ticks, mosquitoes, Japanese beetles, and or using chemical fertilizers because the deed covenants state that they reduce chemical use rather than restrict chemical use. There needs to be a separate entity to monitor and protect the designated open space of any of these applications. Thank you. <clears throat> you said that something, is that a letter that, or <coughs> an item that the applicant can have a copy of as well? Um, yes. I did have to do some last minute edits though. Um, you can send it. Well, I'll make sure that man receives a copy of it. You can send it to myself and the land use clerk, and I'll can send I, it. Can on. I do that like tomorrow morning? Yes. Uh, yeah. I'll do so, that. Mr. Guy, I'll send the copy. Right now, uh, as you are aware, we have a vacancy in the land use clerk position, which is been filled. It doesn't start until next week. I'll get into that later on. But um, I'll make sure that items like that get, get to you. Usually, we have the land use clerk forward everything on. Right. So, that's not direct communication from the board. But in the interim, we're all, we're all kind of filling in so yep, understood um, we we are placing deed restrictions on each of the lots um, like we talked last time we weren't proposing a homeowners association because the lawyers indicate to me that it's it, it doesn't do anything except for where the uh, tax bill goes but if it is the requirement of the board that we have a homeowners association my lawyer their lawyer will write it up tomorrow okay because we already have the deed restrictions that we provided to the board we just have to include the HOA which is not a big deal I have a, a copy of the deed for uh, deed restrictions for Highlands which is filed with um, the Rockingham County uh, Registry of Deeds and it was dated in January 2004 and these are all restrictions for for activities that are not permitted and even though these people have these restrictions their properties are annually monitored for compliance and, and the Conservation Commission has found some violations over the years, and this is the only way to make people behave. I'm sorry, but really. Yeah, no, we're, like I said, we're not opposed to the HOA. Um, it was just a different method of doing the same thing was our intent. Yeah. So if it is the board's request that we do an HOA. Or if, even if, um, Rockingham Con um, Conservation District, if those folks can be um, approached. Yeah, they, we'd, we'd rather take option C, which is a HOA, so and under your regs. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, a comment regarding regional impact. Uh, so uh, I'd like to... Um, make sure that Raymond knows that we are looking for their input. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on on their end, but it, I think it's an important aspect of uh, what happens here. Uh, let's say our, <clears throat> that road is really the same road and going into the same. Yeah, and, and we can't, to my understanding of the RSA, or the language on that is we can't we can't approve it until we've had they've had a chance to weigh in so i don't know if um if the delay there is from you know raymond side or, or just getting scheduling or because there's been revisions to the plan and trying to make sure that it's uh finalized i don't know if well what happened was they they've lost their planner as well so when we first approached them they didn't believe we had to notify abutters after communication with their uh, RPC and their attorneys, then it determined that they did need to notify. So that took a, you know, a month or and a month and a half. And uh, once we submitted, they forgot to send it to the engineer for review. That missed a couple weeks. We've done that. Now we're waiting for the engineer to come back with his comments. And then we're gonna be on the December, I think it's the first week in December. So, a little bit of coordination and I think the tax uh, the uh, um, 
person that does the taxes over there is, is trying to do both jobs right now. So. And I, I don't know if you saw the, I know we had comment from the, the, the Nottingham Fire Department, the Fire Chief, Chief Filchuk, uh, regarding, you know, cistern. So if there's more than one, I believe the, the way the language was written from the chief was that if there's more than one lot being proposed on JAMSA, uh, his requirement would be a, a cistern on JAMSA as well as on um, Moore's. So if we continue with two lots only on JAMSA Trail, obviously the applicant is going to push back on that. I believe we, the, the board just approved an eight lot subdivision would had um, sprinklers without a cistern. Um, we are proposing a cistern on Moores and we are proposing um, lots, the houses on lots 10 and 11 to have sprinklers. So uh, my question to him was really more about if they decide to go with the standard subdivision uh, which would have more lots on um, JOMSA. But uh, yeah, I, we would definitely want to push back on that if we only had the two lots on JOMSA. And I think it's the purview of the board to kind of oversee that. Mr. Chairman, can I ask Mr. Oh. Mm -hmm. Gaia. Um, question. So on this proposed lot B, um, you, you said that you moved that so that it wasn't in the middle of the open space, but it's still in the open space. So I guess my question is, why would you propose a lot that really does the same exact thing? I thought there was a good suggestion about at the last meeting from one of the board members about taking lot 8 and um, passes on. those two lots, um, are they eight and nine? Yeah, eight and nine, and just putting like a, a duplex um, style house on it closer to the street and so that you can create a little bit more open space back there and the lot, the adjacent lot doesn't have a neighbor in their backyard kind of um, approach. And so I was curious to why that wasn't proposed instead of what you proposed on lot B, which is really you no know, different than what exists now. Sure. I mean, our we obviously want to go with what's shown on C2 of the handout, which is the two lots um, just north of the wetland. Um, we proposed the options A and option B because there was comment about it being in the open space. Well, any of these lots are in the open space until you take them and put them into a lot, for one. Two, we provided additional space between map 72, lot 5, and lot 9 at the request of the board and the abutter. So we thought we were meeting the intent that the board had previously requested. We our first submittal had three lots in that area versus two. Right. So what I was trying yeah. to show. In a conceptual, I think, or the design review, the board suggested to you that you not not put that lot in there, in this right. lot. But that, that w w w would probably not, not fare well. So we were trying to show that you could actually do that using that access to Moore's Road between those two lots and the the applicant really would like to get a, a lot on top of that ridge that really is the only area that overlooks the lake so that's why I showed it there that's not our preferred option like I said I'm just trying to give the board options regarding this being on that ridge too I mean that that is counter to the, the intent of the open space plan again Environmentally sensitive areas is one thing we're trying to try and protect with an open space design. Steep slopes are considered an environmentally critical area or sensitive area. Um, so again, I don't think that law could be built as as configured. Well, I in agree because again, that the, the steepness of that slope and the, the amount of rise that's there, I don't foresee how you could get a driveway to meet the you know eight percent slope. <clears throat> you know, to, to be able to access that on a, on a 
on a smaller lot, but you know, less, less than a two acre lot. You want know, a two acre lot, it would be pretty tough to um, to design that. Which, I mean, I go back to what Ms. Mooney read regarding the purpose and intent of the open space. I think the proposal in front of you protects a lot of open space, or a lot of sensitive areas. <clears throat> We're not creating any additional roads. And I think it's a good compromise for the town and the applicant. So, Mr. Chairman, I think there's some open issues here that are open items that we need um, before we, I mean, to me, before we spend any more time talking about this. One is confirmation of whether or not the yield plan is actually correct, right? Um, I think the confirmation on that first order stream, right? Um, Lamprey River Association has <coughs> has also um, suggested that a Heritage Bureau study be done. And what was the other thing? Wetlands. That the, well, and wetlands wetland study done. Wetlands <laughs> assessment done. So I mean, I think there's. There's still missing information, I feel, for me to like, I, I feel like I'm getting it all in like bits and pieces. And um, I just, you know, it's like, can we just get that all that information together so we have it all together instead of getting it in all these bits and pieces and now these like different versions and, and stuff. It just seems like it's, <clears throat> I think like you said, it's, you get it that night and ask to react upon it and you haven't had time to, to look at it, so. I would, I would really um, benefit by having um, my um, take on this, would ben benefit from having a wetland scientist go out and evaluate the productivity and the functionality of those vernal pools to see if they're highly productive or not very productive at all. And and I think in our conditional use, we also, you know, for this wetland um, conditional use one, we also um, recommend an environmental impact um, study. So I, I think we need to do those before we go any further. So the, the NHB was completed. We didn't send it to LAC, the uh, LRC. Um, the wetland, um, a report is completed. The board hadn't asked for that, so we didn't supply it. But both of those things are we can provide those. Um, we do have a vernal pool report. I don't know about the productivity of it. Um, they can't do it obviously now because it's fall. But um, there is a vernal pool report that was completed in the spring. Mm -hmm. So I can, that wasn't requested be before very either. Helpful. Thank you. So yeah, we we have all those items. The board hasn't requested them, so we haven't provided them. Well, we just requested them. So if, if possible. So yeah, the the report that I saw that came in from G, the GZA, but that was from September of 2021. Um, they just said uh, potential vernal pools. That but that again, was, was the wetland report. So there's a wetland report and a vernal pool report. So yeah, I think I mean I think that would be helpful. So I'll forward the the Lamprey River Advisory Committee letter to you so, you so that any responses that are in there can come from from you um, as opposed to from us it, um, <clears throat> and I think any documentation that that's available we can be forwarded to them and or us that helps us you know assess the, the parcel better would be helpful so um, if there's a different wetlands report or an updated version or the brown pool report that that identifies these and is is actual vernal pools instead of potential vernal pools um i think that would be helpful and then you said you do have a natural uh, the heritage bureau uh, report you do have one <clears throat> that'd be uh, appreciated as well here's a question for you <clears throat> just so i can be clear because of all the information that everybody's bringing out here for people out here in the audience maybe they need a little clarification what we're doing so we're asking them to give us vernal pool reports the reason because on the original plan of the two acre lots, we want to know if those vernal pools are viable for him to do a classic call it subdivision. That's why we need to see him. 
if we were looking just to go with plan C, the smaller lot, you know, the one that we all want, you know, where none of these other vernal pools are going to be there except for this one here, that's actually might be affected, right? Am I correct on that? This one over here doesn't make a difference if he goes on this plan. What this vernal pool is because it's going to be in conservation, correct? Right, but we need it for the yield plan. And for the original, the, the two acre, the the, lid, the big one. Even though we're not going, we're not looking at even going that way. No, but we nobody wants to. Go no, but the us. yield plan determines how many lots. Can so be. we're basically saying, in order, so the other reasoning is what we're doing this is so the fact that if that does there, we can kill that lot. Then we can actually ask them to do a ten lot subdivision instead of a well, that's eleven all they lot would subdivision. Be able to do. Okay. And, and Reasoning that, behind where we're going with this situation, I wanted people to be clear of why, you know, these questions are being asked. Because I know it goes back and forth, and I've listened to these, and it's, sometimes it's very difficult. So I'm just hoping that by me asking these questions, I'm making it a little clearer for you of what the board's actually looking for and why we're asking these questions. And if I could add to your comment, John. Which is, I'm not really making a negative no, or positive no, no, I'm comment. Just asking, I'm just, no, no, no. Okay. You know, for, um, for outreach, so to speak, there's nothing to say that the owner and the and the applicant won't revert back to a conventional plan right. if they are not satisfied um, with what the board decides here. They could very well go back to a conventional, and at that point, we would need to have right. all this information. Otherwise, but, everybody gets held up. Right. But again, we pretty much, as experienced with all the years that we've all been doing this on the board, know that nobody wants to see the conventional plan that well in this case it's this a little is a much better for everybody plan in this case it's a little different because we're not creating a roadway i know so typically you are correct we would fight to the death to get the open space because we'd have less road correct in this case we have the same amount of road no matter which project we do mm -hmm. so my applicant is he wants to move forward quickly and he was he's adamant that the 11th lot is going to stay let me just put it that way so <laughs> take it take it for what it is but he wants to move quickly and whether the open space is protect or whether the wetland and environmental areas are protected by open space or not so i mean the and we get that from from people all the time you know applicants can can want what what they want and we but we go by our regulations and I think the very first meeting I mentioned the yield plan seemed high and again that 11th lot looking back at the yield plan would be potentially crossing next to a vernal pool and have a wetland in, impact which isn't allowed within our standard zoning it would have to requ require a conditional use permit and must add a potential vernal pool impact and then there is no conditional use permit allowed for that it would have to go to get a variance um, so I mean I can see from the, from that original wetlands report you know there was obviously a, a, a very different look at this originally it looked like originally the applicant might have been looking at a cul-de-sac option at the beginning um, but regardless of that I think just eliminating one lot and if I was to if I was to indicate from all the comments we've had in some of the condition use permit requests, you know, I would I would say it would eliminate lot that lot nine and just go with the configuration uh, that you that you had on on B, but eliminating lot nine for lot eight. That brings lot eight within compliance of the open space development. Um, it's less than forty five thousand square feet at that point, so that that brings that one in conformity, and I think. Uh, I think it, it, it all become conforming at that point. No, if you look at, at, at option A, we can make all the lots conforming without a conditional use permit for the size. So right now, the proposal we have in front of you, lots four through nine, are slightly well. Some of them are larger. Some of them are only slightly larger than forty-five thousand. Okay, but we think they provide a better lot for the end user and the town eventually they won't have as many issues in our opinion 
Thank you, Mr. Geyer. That was the topic I was going to speak to tonight. Having four oversized lots and an open space subdivision is really rather contrary to the spirit of an open space subdivision. But we're but I'm glad that you we are providing more open space than is required, as well as more buildable open space by almost 50%. I understand. So it's a little give and take. We're, we, the applicant believes he's, he's giving as well as taking, and I think the board is in the, and the town is in the same situation. It's getting, maybe we would have, maybe lot, uh, the 11th lot could get approved by the planning board if it came in as conventional, or maybe it couldn't. But at the same time, you're not getting an open space subdivision at that point. So in the eyes of the applicant, and, and the impact would be to a small wetland area. Now, we know it would require a wetland impact, but it's a minor wetland impact for the, if it went with the yield plan. So in the eyes of the applicant, it's a compromise, and I know none of us would like to throw away forty to sixty thousand dollars for a lot. But I also know if you were to try to add additional lots onto Jamsa, that road is going to need significant improvements. The road agent has already kind of indicated that um, the, the the two different roads, Moore's Road, is obviously at a much higher uh, quality. It's already been improved slightly. It's wider. Uh, Jamsa has is a much narrower road uh, and has significant. You know, you can see significant areas where. You know, wetland crossings. So to add additional lots onto that road, the, the town is going to require significant improvement to that road for that to occur. Yep, which is, again, one of the reasons we were in for the open space. Yeah, but I'm just saying, so if, if, if it sounds like by us pushing back on, on one lot, that, that it sounds like it's going to move towards the yield plan, and that's the, you know, the owner's purview. But knowing that the yield plan would require significant additional, you know, Im improvement of, of areas, um, potential variances and conditional use permits, uh, you know, not outstanding. Um, Understood. <laughs> so we do have. And I don't know if, if, if we can act yet on the conditional use permits uh, that we have requested, knowing that we have um, or awaiting comment from Raymond. I don't know if you have any guidance on that, if we should, uh, Mr. Gar, if you prefer that we hold off on. Uh, it's really up to the board. The, the conditional use permits, I don't believe, um, are really um, dependent upon Raymond's input. Um, it's the landscape buffer, mm -hmm. the wetland impact, and then the um, larger lot sizes. So we can go through it or we can wait until next time. It's up to the board. I'll just go back through all three of those again. them up. And the third condition use permit potentially potentially could go away um, is what you're showing today tonight correct yeah we showed you that we can provide it that's option a without the conditional use permit um, we believe that the granting of the conditional use permit will provide better more flexible lots okay. while we still have the required amount of open space and buildable open space and we're in excess of those and then the um, the declaration covenants that were provided. I don't know if these have been sent to town council yet. Is this kind of the draft that is? Yeah, we sent it in um, with our last submittal. I don't know if it's been reviewed by town council or not. I will make a follow-up note on that one to make sure it may be there. Um, like I said, I've seen a few different town council responses come and back. I think we kind of need a straw poll from the board whether the deed restrictions are acceptable or if the board would is going to require that it, a uh, HOA be formed because the deed we have for it in, um, that we'd submitted previously was for the deed restrictions without an HOA. Um, but like I said, per Ms. Mooney's comments that we, we could provide an HOA, it's just a matter of, it wouldn't really the change the restrictions. 
a, a third party to oversee, whether it's an HOA or a land trust. And the wording is shall, which means you don't have a choice unless you ask for a CUP. Well, the, the lawyer's opinion was that the, the regulations conflict themselves, and so it was either a deed restriction or an HOA, it was, was his opinion. I'm not a lawyer, I'm not gonna argue that, but if the board wants an HOA, then that's what we'll do. So the concern being, if I'm, if I'm understanding correctly, the concern being, if it's just placing deed restrictions, there's no oversight of that, except for when property changes hands and or neighbors um, report each other, but then, you know, what happens with a violation, I guess. Um, if the, like if making the neighbors friendly. Right, whereas when you, when you assign a third party to it, you know, it's, it gets onto a schedule, it's monitored, it kind of eliminates that. Um, is it my summer? Opportunity. I'd like to see the third party, <clears throat> in my opinion. Anybody else, anybody else like to? Yes, I agree. That's what he asked for, so. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think in, in the long run, it's going to help keep <clears throat> peace in the neighborhood. Very much so, probably. No problem. Three. So I would wait to send that out. Okay. And we can have that back, hopefully, within by the end of the week. It's one thing, maybe. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, <coughs> So I think we can hold off on the conditional use permit portion for tonight, just in is case there's any revisions based uh, after Raymond. Um, just in that off chance Raymond comes back with something. Uh, yes. this is, these are the deed restrictions for highlands mm -hmm. that are recorded at the um, Registry of Deeds. It's a hard copy. May I give this to Mr. Geyer, Maria Caruso? They're pretty restrictive, but they're good for the environment. So they're 18 years old, so it may, <laughs> again, town council may, uh, may change those, but um, if that's been on file currently, it's worked, that might be a good And I can send you that time. or send it to um, Mr. Beal electronically, and he can forward it to you. We can just pull it up. I got the spoken page. Go. Good. So if we're going to hold off on the conditional use until um, after um, meet with, with Raymond and then um, you'll send us those studies, I guess he then the only open item is this, whether it gets presented to us as a final for C2 or A or B or... <coughs> well, can we ask... Ask the applicant right now. Does anybody really want to see B? No. No. So we pretty much know that none of us here want to see B. Right. So we're still really talking about C2 or A. A. Yeah. So we can pretty much just throw out the B one. And I still like the idea of a duplex. I think I it's don't. marketable. Um, mom and dad and children or grandparents or whatever. Or rentals. I can present that to my applicant to the applicant it and would be see how he takes it so much more desirable for me to see that accommodation and the neighbors <clears throat> I'm sure so, so the other thing is is go back to the yield what do we need to do to make a decision on whether or not the original year yield plan is correct or not do you have somebody who could look at it? I mean, I can send it out to town. The, the only thing I can do, I can, well, I'll let Mr. Haney, you know, chime in if, if I misspeak. The only thing, one avenue I see was, would potentially go to town council, request their input as to um, through our current regulations, the way they're worded, do yield plans have to meet What's, what would be potential with, without any kind of additional action, meaning variances, conditional use permits, exceptions, special exceptions, those items, or can they, can they show just you know, how lots could be built if all those other, you know, if, if understanding that you know, variances and 
whatnot could be could be uh, sought. And if there's another avenue, I'm, I'm welcome to to to, to go that route. Um, Mr. Haney, I don't know if you've come up with that before with the other towns with yield plans and um, things of that nature. I mean, I, th I think our documents are pretty broad in that it ultimately leaves it up to the board to determine, um, you know, the number of lots. Yeah, <clears throat> it's um, it's a short paragraph that um, doesn't talk about anything other than um, uh, septic, uh, you know, the density of the, the soil's carrying capacity. Um, but it does say under a conventional subdivision for the zoning district. So, uh, you know, I've seen uh, yield plans that have you know, more sp specifics to them, but uh, yeah, I agree with you, it's, it's pretty broad. Um, and I think the interpretation would be up to the board but I think a fair interpretation is that you know, it needs to meet the, the regulations um, and not require additional permitting because that's an unknown. Um, it's not a, and nothing, none of that is guaranteed. That's the way I would interpret it. I think it's a good idea to get legal. If I may, Mr. Chairman, I've done multiple of these all over the state um, what we typically find is the board will review it for um, reasonable reasonableness I guess so we never we would never get approved a wetland impact per se that would cross this major wetland go through the beaver pond that wouldn't be reasonable but a small wetland impact for a driveway is potentially reasonable there's not a lot of places in in uh, New Hampshire and Nottingham where you could put a road if if we had to construct a road if this was 54 acres of virgin land that we had to put a road through that you wouldn't have to have at least one wetland impact to put a road in so I mean that's what we've seen and that's what we try to design on is being reasonable with any of the impacts or any of the additional information or additional uh, permitting that would be required. Uh, a quick question is to this point. I mean, these you know pretty long driveways coming off the jam site are, are, are verified that they're not going to exceed uh, uh, you know, maximum slopes. I mean, even the one off the Moore's Road, the, the two at the bottom there. Or a separate question from that, like this on the existing conditions plan C1, whereas a vernal pool line typical, that's, is that the, ex that line, is that the extent of the vernal pool or is that the extent of the vernal pool and any setback? No, the setback is shown outside of the vernal pool, the yellow line. So the vernal pool line is the actual line of the vernal pool, the purple. The outside line of that is the actual wetland buffer, or the um, no cut, no disturb buffer. The yellow. Yeah, so you have two <laughs> yellow lines there, yep. especially in the right, top right. So the, the closest one to the wetland is the 25 foot, no cut, no disturb. And the outside one would be a wetland um, setback. And those are all 50 foot setbacks, not 75. For the wetland? Um, I would have to double check that. It'd probably be 75 because it's showing it's very poorly drained. Oh, um, no, I'm sorry, never mind. VPD line, I would have assumed that's very poorly drained line. Yeah, yes, I yes. think we, don't they vary depending on, I, I can't recall off the top of my head, honestly, depending on if it's VPD or BD. Yeah. Very so they, they're they shown according to VPD or PD. Okay, the buffers are accurate depending on the soils. Yes, ma'am. Again, I'm 
happy to go to council on it just to confirm that that piece and because again it, just where the, that potential driveway would have been on the yield plan it's going to be hugging or through the front pool buffer too um, <clears throat> so i understand your, your your point about it would be a minor you know it'd be a wetland impact but it wouldn't be substantial um, but the way our zoning is written every any wetland impact direct wetland impact is pretty substantial some i understand that some are, are you know have more scale or scope than others do Need a motion? Uh, we can do it that way, sure. Yeah. Um, I feel like I propose that we send the um, uh, yield plan to personal counsel for case number 22 011 SUV. I'll second. That's a motion by Ms. Uh, Mooney, a second by Ms. Anderson. Uh, is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. Uh, motion carries um, 6 1. Aye. I'll send that off tomorrow. So they said personal council, it's town council. Um, personal council for the board, I guess, but town council. So I'll send that off just to get, and as soon as I get a response, um, well, I'll share if I can. All right. <laughs> Do we have, uh, I'll go, before we continue on, I'll go ahead, this is a public hearing. I'm gonna reopen the public hearing for additional uh, public comment. If it's something that's been, um, that we addressed tonight, that, that you're just reiterating, or if you've had it, spoken towards something before, um, you're welcome to do so, but we're just gonna try to keep keep everything uh, moving along. So, uh, so if you'd like to speak towards the application, please come forward, against, or just general comments, uh, please come up. And again, please direct comments towards the board and uh, identify yourself first. Hello. Good evening. Heather Iworski, 104 Mountain Road. Um, I'm in a butter. Um, so a lot of the things I was going to say, actually, Susan Moody kind of recapped the open space development. Um, but I think a lot of this would have got taken care of if the, you know, um, we have the objectives here, but the, the actual applicant and everything and those impact studies were supp supplied before. We could have probably saved a lot of time, meaning the environmental impact, the wetland study, the wildlife study, the hydrogeological study, or any of those. Um, those are at the you, the board, do have to request those. So I really highly recommend that you read through the ordinance and request every single one of those impact studies. Um, before I get into more things, I just wanna say this lot is actually in current use and it is, it's a one F residential waterfront. I'm wondering if you can help explain that to me and how this open space subdivision plan, how that impacts that, does that change? if this is granted from the assessing side you mean so current use for things to come out of current use there's a and mr morin is probably more versed in the assessing side than i am um, but when things come out of current use for development there is a penalty paid on it okay uh, based on the assessed value um, but then for the remainder of the open space that i believe stays in it, 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 it's out of developmental phase so um so the tax on that is on different lot as a whole has a certain value. Whatever mm -hmm. the certain value is, say if it was a different situation and Mr. Rossberger was selling it to somebody else, whatever the value that he's selling it, there's a 10% cost. That 10% he has to pay towards the town, which goes to the conservation. Okay. Right? So, so for future conservation of other lands in town. That's his penalty for taking it out. Then every single lot that's on here has to get paid an impact fee if, whenever built upon. Okay. So then there's a $6,500 fee that goes to every single lot, which is paid to the town for resources, for future uh, endeavors into the town, for new additions to schools, to fire departments, and stuff like that. Okay. These departments, rec department, and those fees go into those. All right. So there is significant um, money that That's, gets dealt 
because I know it's a tax savings right now for the owner, but after. it won't be. No. And I can't imagine the people buying this lot or just developers going to have a fun time with all these fees that are coming up, especially after we read the um, wetlands report and get an idea on how we're going to update the roads and so forth. One of the things that stood out to me today was how we are understaffed here in our small town in Nottingham. We're without a planner. Um, you know, we're missing some folks here. Sounds like Raymond's understaffed. Um, if we can't manage like our current population, how are we going to add more homes and people? I don't know how we're going to do that. Um, there wasn't even enough parking at the school to go vote. I just don't. I don't see how, why we're developing like crazy in this town. This town isn't meant to be Manchester, New Hampshire. It's not Exeter, New Hampshire. It's Nottingham, New Hampshire. It's meant to sustain its natural resources. This lot was never developed before. I'm curious of why. I think part of it has to do is those roads were private roads and they couldn't. Um, but another part is because it's just not meant to hold 11 lots. It's not meant to hold those properties. It might hold a couple. I walk down those roads almost every day. It might hold a few. There's a few dry areas, but the slopes on that road, everything goes downhill. Lot 10 and 11 are uphill from the wetland, directly uphill, right into the wetland. So you know all of that erosion and all of that pollution and everything from those homes, from the construction, from the cars in the driveway, from just everything that these people do in their homes is going into that wetland. From that wetland, it's going right into Patakaway Lake. And by the time it reaches Patakaway Lake, it's already infiltrated like all of the wells that the abutters behind me have down there. Good news, I'm up the hill, but it's still, that's not, that's not okay. We're also talking about we're saving, you know, this open space. The open space is bigger than, you know, what the ordinance says it should be. Just because you're not building on a piece of land doesn't mean it's not going to be impacted. The impact, like construction itself, the driveway, widening a road, um, creating a walking path, that is all impacting the hundreds of square feet around it. The animals just don't live in the wetland. They live outside of the wetland. That's why there's a buffer. They, the turtles go to lay their eggs. You know, they're crossing the street and coming back. They're not going to know how to come back when all of these houses are in the way. Or God knows what, you know, people will be building there. It just is not a good place to build. I think this is why there's so many people against it. And it wasn't a smart choice to buy this lot if you knew it wasn't a good place to build. If you had a plan to buy a lot to subdivide, this is not the lot. It's just not the lot. It's too hilly, it's steep, it's full of vernal pools. Half of it's wet, so on both sides, between Saks and Jamsa, there's all these pools of water right now, and it's it's been kind of dry. It did rain a little bit. All these pools of water, I have pictures on my phone, just sitting water. And even off, I didn't walk in the property because it's private property, but I could see off of Jamsa Trail where the stakes are right now that say lot 10 and 11. There is water there. There is water abutting that invisible lot line. Like there, <laughs> there are animals running around. There, there is wildlife. There are, you know, there's vegetation. And then I think about, okay, so let's say this gets approved. Well, these people also have to pull an AOT permit. I've done that before. I do it for a living. That's not easy. That's expensive. I don't know how you're going to get an AOT permit for all of those lots and to take out all those trees and vegetation. Because as far as I know in the master plan, I brought it up last time, I'll bring it up again, the town wanted to adopt a forest so they can manage it for education and to use it for public space. So I'm asking, why doesn't the town think about adopting this piece of land? It's a great piece of land. It has everything even a land trust would want in it. And I actually have a few land trusts like looking into this right now. The thing about that is we all know the applicant is in it for the financial reasons. And the land trust is not a financially savvy option for somebody selling land. 
they also have to be in the right mindset and you know share the same values and i'm really not hearing that from the applicant's representative um i i'm just asking you know there's 38.583 acres of hardwood on this lot there are 12 acres of wetlands and that's in the um, assessment so that that would be great for the town to own and have the public go through um, I also want to bring up that we also have a uh, milfoil we know that that's a thing we've talked about all the other things we talked about drought the wells milfoil is huge all of this stuff is going to run down in the lake the lake being a waterfront property and having rights to that boat access, that means there's more people going down there using the lake without... Is there any milfoil there? Huh? Is there any milfoil there? Well, it just needs to be eradicated. Any... Doesn't mean we want oh, more. It's tough. So I'm we... just saying it's already located there. I know so where it is. This isn't going to change that, but so, we're not arguing. Go on. Milfoil spreads. <laughs> um, and not only that, it's... It, uh, the, it's such a close-knit community down there on that launch I can't imagine 11 households going down to use that boat launch we haven't even addressed how they're going to get down to the lake or how that part's going to be used there's no parking I know that um, Nottingham uh, Pataka Wave Park they're up for an expansion they want an expansion so not only do we have this expansion on this side of the lake right around the corner there might be more campgrounds and more building and more construction and more expansion so now this whole part of the lake we're just going to like in the next what two years just blow up with all this construction and all this traffic mountain road can't handle any more traffic i know um i who live on it can't take it anymore um, i can't take the trash the noise, the lights, the it's it's crazy. It's dangerous as well. Um, I guess I don't know. I just I am I'm just overwhelmed by the amount of time we've spent on this application and not had all of this paperwork done ahead of time and all these impact statements and I just like you said, I would love to see all that. And I would love to see all that posted online on the website before we get here, not handed out the day of or the night of. This is a public meeting. That is public documents should be posted on the website or available for us to come down on the town and review before the meeting. Go to planning boards every week. So I know, I know that's usually the requirement. Um, I'll be in Stratum on Wednesday. And if they don't get those documents by Friday, I'm not presenting on Wednesday. So there needs to be some better deadlines here with that. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's, I'll just, it's on, it's, and then back to the town to the manage the public space and adopt, think about adopting it. Um, you know, there's a lot of unfragmented land and forest there. It's actually on one of the master plans in the map. So one of the um, goals in the spirits of Nottingham is to enhance and preserve that. So building these homes is against everything that stands for. So I'm hoping that we can stop compromising on this and start just realizing it's just not a good idea and think of plan B, which is nothing that you have in front of you right now. And I will not quit. You will not get sick of me. Or you probably already have, but that's all I have to say. Thank you. Um, one thing I did want to touch on, you mentioned the Buffalo State Park expansion that's being planned. That, that's separate. I've reached out to town council to see if we have any purview over that. That's separate from this case. It's not attached to this case one bit. Um, I don't know that the land use board has any purview over what the state plans on doing, but I did reach out to council to see if we do or not. Um, but there is, I believe, a public hearing or, or there was a meeting or there's one coming up uh, for the state for their potential plans on that for public input. So. And I think, Mr. Chair, I think one other to um, the speaker and Mr. Geyer can probably just confirm, but it, it was my understanding that none of these houses have access to um, the beach that's down there. Is that correct? We can confirm that when Mr. Geyer yeah. comes back up. Uh, yeah. Make a note on it. Um, well, that part, I think we may have touched upon it before, but I'll, I'll yeah. ask for clarity. Is there any other um, public comment? Again, 
this case can be continued, so we'll have another chance for a public hearing. But um, you know, if there's anything new, like here tonight, please. I'll be real quick. I just have a quick question. I wanted to know what the landscape buffer was. Yeah, uh, identify yourself, sir. Oh, I'm sorry, Craig Porter, 18 Moores Road. The landscape buffer. So, on a conventional open space plan, it, it's usually looking. It, it's usually one that would be involving a new road. So, within the new road, there's a uh, there's a requirement for a 100 foot buffer between that road and um, in the road it's coming off of. Okay. The buffer. So it's okay. usually to protect the, to screen <laughs> to screen the um, the new neighborhood from current. So to make it to try to protect from other neighborhoods the way it looks. All right. Um, the other thing I'd like to say is that uh, as far as a duplex, I'm on lot five. I'd prefer not a duplex. I'd be afraid it'd get rented out and I end up next to renters that are just trashing their property and it looks like garbage and brings me down. So I, I would prefer what's there over a duplex. Uh, although I really don't like the lot in the back, I do think it's an impact on the, uh, the conservation back there and the land. Um, although I prefer his C2 plan to his other plan where, his, where he had the lot right on the, on the back of my house, right on the back of that. Basically, you know, where he, he has on this plan, he's out of the buffer between me and that back lot, which I appreciated. But it does throw the house back into the middle of the uh, conservation area. <clears throat> and the only other thing I would say is if, if, if he was neighborly enough to put the houses on the champs, so then I would ask that maybe you don't make him do the cistern and do the sprinkler system. Thank you. Right, thank you. Is there additional public comment? Come on up, please. Susan Diamond Johnston. I've been a part-time and now resident on Moore's Road. Well, 1945, my parents bought the property in 1940. I've walked through the land as a young woman, young girl. I haven't been through it of recent years. But it is a land which we do have a lot of swampland, ponds, and I think it's too bad to not have a plan with more creativity. I understand putting in homes. I understand it's income for our town, but there's, it can be done in a way that you can offer more to this property and give it some beautification instead of going in and doing it as a money maker and basically slaughtering the land. I've worked with the Secretary of Interior. I have a little background. I'm not an engineer. I've been part owner of 10,000 acres of cotton land. I know what erosion is. I know what it takes to develop land. And my question is, I'm not sure this property can take erosion and skitters coming in and squeezing all these lots together. You can make this area, which is not a large area, really, when you speak about it, and make it probably one of the loveliest spots that we can contribute to our wonderful community, which is Nottingham. And so I, I do have a little background. I did do a development in Maine and I gave eight, nine acres per parcel. Now this is not a development that's gonna do that. But I do feel that the community needs to start to 
show some type of, I know we have to develop, but I think we need to look at a little bit more of what it's going to look like in the future and still have tree growth, not take down all the trees. You can't develop seven lots, 11 lots, whatever they're doing here, and, and think you're gonna have any forage left. You can't. Time you put in your septic, time you put in your wells, and even I am a little concerned of what's gonna happen on the ridge, how, what's gonna come down into my land. I have a swamp behind me, which is being drained out by geothermal. What's going to happen to my water? Several of my neighbors were already feeling a little bit of a water shortage from our wells. And that ridge, somewhere along here, we're going to lose some water. And I'm concerned about my well. My neighbors are concerned about their wells. And I hope that enough has been put into this development, instead of thinking about the whole money aspect, but think of what is it doing to our environment? How is it helping us? Is it creating an issue that maybe we should avoid and maybe not put one lot here, separate this out a little bit? It just seems to me we have to come to a point where is all this money worth it? To what it's going to do to our land. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any additional public comment for tonight? Seeing none, I'll close the uh, the public hearing. Mr. Geyer, um, so I think one of the questions that came up, and I feel like you've touched upon it before, but uh, so I apologize, um, was the question about a boat launch or lake frontage. I'm not sure about a boat launch, but the applicant does have at the end of Moore's Road, adjacent to Hanlon Hill Road, he believes he has um, rights to the beach at the bottom of the hill. Is that now, right? whether that's from? going to be, um, <clears throat> deeded to as part of this to the um, homeowners or not I I don't think that decisions have been made and are those rights coming from this parcel or from correct the parcel that they own? Okay. so at this time we don't know if those, if, if those rights are going to be extinguished exhausted surrendered <laughs> or but transferred Something of that would be in the deed language that yes. that gets reviewed, and um, I don't remember if it's in there. If there's anything I touched upon it now, I can't recall myself. <laughs> but we'll since we're updating them anyway we're, to include the HOA, we'll make sure something of that nature is included. I think it'd be good if yes, if there's anything there now that's specifying there's some kind of um, access granted from this parcel, and that's either you know just to address it either that it's gonna. Uh, surrender it's going to continue on it's being transferred to the owner to another lot they own somehow I, I don't know how that process works but uh, that clarification would be would be welcome Is there any additional comment from the board for tonight Um, so, Mr. Guy, you said you're before the Raymond Board now. <clears throat> what date? The first week in December, and I can't recall what the date is. They're Thursday. Okay. So that'd be the first. If that's December 1st is a Thursday. Then I believe that would be fairly certain that's the night. Let me just. <clears throat> well, we meet again either way. So if it's the first or the eighth, we meet again on the 14th. Uh, so it's after that, okay. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, we're November at the 14th of yes. December okay. um, with deliverables. It should be it's supposed to be November 14th, but that's for new applications. I'm sorry. Deliverables will be a week ahead of time, so November, December 7th. Especially if there's any major revisions. Does that night, December 14th, work for you? Yes, sir. All right, so the, the action items I have, I'm going to be reaching out to town council. Um, Mr. Geyer is going to have some updated 
language drafted up that we can then submit to town council for review if you have that in between if you submit it through to the land use clerk cc me on that please and, and mr haney um so that we want to just make sure that it gets to town council for review um, you were going to submit the, the, the few studies the vernal pool study um, the national heritage bureau uh, information as well That's kind of where, and then that's what I had for items. That's what I had. Oh, and then the Library River Advisory Committee letter, oh. if you have a response for that, you can send it directly to that person or send it to me, and I will, um, again, CC the, the land use clerk in Blair, and I will uh, forward it on to the person that sent that to us. Excellent. So a motion to continue to December 14th with deliverables uh, by December 7th would be in order. Mr. Chairman, uh, move to um, extend uh, case number 22-011-SUB to December 14th at 7 p.m. Second that. So we have a, a motion by Mr. Anderson and a second by Ms. Jones. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, that motion carries uh, seven zero. Thank you all very much. Thank you. I just want to say happy Thanksgiving to everybody. You too. Okay. So Mr. Um, Mr. McKinnon is rejoining the table. Uh, so it means Mr. Davies will resume his uh, place as an alternate participating but non-voting uh, member. All right, next on the agenda is, <laughs> lost my case. Apologize. It's case 22-016-SUB, an application from, this is another continued case, application from Ann and Richard Bacon, requesting planning board approval to subdivide a 7.3 acre lot into two lots, property located at 168 Gower Road, identified as map 40, lot four, and this is, uh, Gower Road is a scenic road. Is it still a scenic? No, it's not scenic. It's not. We still have it on the agenda as a road. <laughs> Mike, we clarified that that portion of Gow Road is not scenic, I believe, at a prior meeting. All right. And introduce yourself and just kind of give us an update. Yep. As to Richard Bacon, yeah. property owner, applicant. Um, met with CONCOM just in case. Didn't want to blow the opportunity if we were there. Um, my surveyor sent up the new plans with a couple minor revisions, one being the uh, lot sizing and another the driveway. And I think everything else that was conditioned last time has been addressed. Only thing that I don't have is a, on the plans, plans that you currently have is the, uh, Wetland scientist stamp, she was in Scotland. But we both left the country at the same time, so. That can be a condition. And again, the wetlands on this, I believe, were, were they, they were at the very edge of- At the very, the very edge. Very corner, right? Correct. Very small section it's, of wetlands. It's about a 10 foot radius. Yeah. It just happens to be there because of the uh, double stone wall in the driveway next door but nothing proposed here is, no. is um, anywhere, totally near, closed. Near, anywhere near, near it nope and then uh, all right thank you uh, mr. Haney did, did you have any other I think you submitted another review on this one I did it was largely just a recapture of what was submitted um, because it was um, fairly minor uh, I just pointed out that the applicant showed um, revised plans show, uh, a, show a driveway to the back lot and uh, show calculations for buildable uh, area for, or building area, sorry, um, on the plan. Uh, those were the two of the comments that the, the board had asked for. And I did note that despite not being on a scenic road, the, the applicant went before the Conservation Commission and their uh, uh, one of the comments that came out of them was that uh, speaking to the road agent. I haven't seen any comment from the road agent. I talked to him. He was cool. 
He <laughs> basically just said, swells at a culvert. I said, okay. Mm -hmm. And I added a note to the plan about uh, meeting town drive voice back, which I assume is going to be culvert, swales, paved apron. Yeah, I bumped into Sean at the uh, town office. Mm -hmm. Is there a note on here too? Do you know, usually there's supposed to be a required note for uh, indicating that that subdivision is subject to um, impact fees. Oh, didn't know that. I'll add that. Okay. Not a problem. I think it's in the subreg, just what the language is that basically just that's what it says. I can add that. Um, is the Impact fee is that would that be for the one lot? Yeah, not the, the new two. The, the new, the, the new lot. lot. And oh. is that due at the time of or is that due at CO? I believe CO. I believe it's CO. It's at CO. the time of occupancy permit comes out, yeah. Prior to that being issued. Yep. And, and there is a, I'm trying to see it again. I, I believe there's a note on there about no, for, no further subdivision of one of the lots. That note's on there, correct? Uh, uh, note six on two of two. Perfect, there it is, okay. Thank you. And Ms. Mooney, uh, your, the Conservation Commission, uh, the applicant, they indicated they met with the, the CONCOM, was there any? Comment that came out of that. That's um, only that um, they check in with um, the road agent. Yeah. I haven't heard anything back. I do have the Nottingham Fire and Rescue comment from. I never received. Any. And it, it, it just this is dated October 12th, and his comment for your application minor subdivision. No further comments. <laughs> Standard. My favorite kind. What's your response? <laughs> My favorite kind. I'll have to talk to them about 911 numbers. Just because the uh, the lot right before it is at 166 already. This one was 168. I do believe that the neighbor is 174, so I'm sure they can squeeze something in there, depending on the uh, distance. Mm -hmm. But I'll talk to them about that. Yeah, that's a the whole system. That's separate from us. Yeah. So you're, you're, yeah. Yep. Is there any additional comment from the board? I, I just want to say that the Conservation Commission is made up of tree, tree huggers, and so we hope that you save the shag box if you can. Yep. I noted that. <laughs> Do you want to come out and flag what you? <laughs> No, no, no. You know what they look like. Everybody does. I'll, um, <laughs> since, since we since we did continue the public hearing, I'm going to reopen the public hearing. Uh, if there's anybody that would like to speak to, for, or against this this application, please come forward. Going twice. Last chance. Okay. I'm going to close the uh, public hearing. So at this point, um, I believe there's the standard, there's a set of conditions um, as outlined in the staff staff documents. You know, final plan set. If this were to be approved, final plan set, Mylar, um, Wetland signed to stamp on on the final plan, signature blocks, which is the um, sorry the monuments that, monuments set. Yeah, that was the other thing I added. The uh, seven signature block mm -hmm. and the monuments so obviously the, the parent parcel probably already has the monument set but if not it's mm -hmm. um you know 300 feet every 300 feet on the uh sidelines mm -hmm. and then granite bounds on the corners and then granite bounds to a new lot of the new line on the corners so um you and then you want you want the Impact fee. You want the impact fee. Note. The impact fee note and the. Did you say bounds on the corners as opposed to pins? We we've always unless it's a waiver we've always require granite bounds at the corners, but pins can be used on. Yep. On 
the um, sideline. But by corners, are you saying a turn in the line, or you're saying like a rear or back? Usually, it's just on the. Uh, just because of, are you saying are you saying you would look, like for example on this sheet? Are you looking for a, a granite bound there? Oh, it's a little. Oh, what are you saying? Like the, this one, the midline. Yeah. Or are you referring to like? That's a pen for me. Yeah, yeah. Corner. Okay. Good. Then I think what you have on the plan is fine. Okay. And yet I'm not sure 100%. Space, spacing was fine too. The the uh, front maybe a drill hole as opposed so we can keep the wall okay. intact. We'll just say we'll say monument set. Since that one's not changing it anyhow. So did you want to make a motion or? Uh... No, it doesn't matter. Good. I'll make a motion to approve case number 22-016-SUB uh, with standard conditions, plan copies, fees paid, um, mylar, and um, with the added condition that a note be added that the new parcel is subject to town impact fees. Um, and uh, yeah, that's good. Uh, final stamp signatures, surveyor, wetland stamp, and uh, the last one will just be bound set per the plan. Second. A motion by Mr. Uh, McKinnon, second by Ms. Mooney. Any further discussion on that? All those in favor, please say aye. Okay. aye. All those opposed, uh, motion carries 7 0. Quick question: Are we going to get a new land use clerk? Uh, we the town has hired a land use clerk that starts next week, I believe. Okay, so it's going to take a little so, while so, to run yeah. up speed, and I don't know what the hours or days I, will be as of yet. Yeah, what I nice. was, she's new, <laughs> but we haven't finalized her being employed by the town yet until okay. Monday's select board meeting. We'll get the final approval, but be nice. Okay. Yeah, no, I was just dropping things off at. So I know you already are. I'm just joking. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> thank you all very much. Appreciate thank you. Thank you. All right. Next on the item uh, on the agenda is case 22-017-SUB. This is another continued case. It's an application from Joe and Don Fernald requesting planning board approval to subdivide a 118.26 acre lot, three lots. The property is located at 54 Deerfield Road in Nottingham, New Hampshire, identified as map 52, lot 4 2. And Ms. Barry, if you could uh, identify yourself and then uh, just give us an update on to where we are. Uh, you did submit plans, which I've handed out tonight to everybody that did have a narrative with them. So. Uh, Christopher Berry with Berry Surveying and Engineering representing uh, the applicant here this evening. Uh, we did submit uh, revised plans. We also submitted a revised or a, a cover letter uh, that sort of itemized out the discussion points from last meeting. Uh, we addressed those in the plans. Um, <clears throat> I won't go point by point. Uh, I'll just point out some of the sort of the, you know, the more obvious items. Um, the planner had pointed out that the sideline was too close to the proposed driveway, so we modified where the sideline was instead of relocating the driveway closer to a wetland. Uh, the applicants uh, in that effort asked if we could make the uh, lot around the existing house larger uh, so that they could maintain a current use status of the structure uh, into the future. Uh, so everything has been updated, uh, the lake frontage uh, lot areas Etc. Building setbacks have all been updated um, accordingly. Uh, all of the areas and developable areas have uh, been updated as well. Uh, there were a couple of minor things that uh, the board asked for on the proposed private road. Um, the entrance uh, is proposed to now have a stop sign where the private road with uh, private so the private road sign would sit atop. Uh, the board asked if we could delineate the crossing where we taper. The road down a little bit. We've chosen to do just a very simple wood frame rail. A detail of that is provided, as well as a detail of the uh, stop sign. Um, I think Ms. Mooney, um, and I don't want to get into a big thing here, but I think Ms. Mooney pointed out that uh, she felt that there was a, a river, a named river below the dam. Um, my research didn't really find a conclusive answer to that, and so I just point out in my letter that. 
Um, I'm perfectly happy to call it anything the board wants us to call it. Um, DES, uh, the Shoreland uh, uh, Department, just calls it an unnamed river or stream uh, and doesn't define it. Um, I find that there's discussion about this on multiple message boards and um, online resources. So uh, we've named the uh, river at the outlet to the dam, the Elliott River. Um, it is a, uh, a river that is on the Shoreland uh, list as unnamed, and so it is subject to uh, the Shoreland Protection Act. So we did at least show uh, where the threat of it was and where the overlay for the shoreland zone would be. Um, on our plans, it does not affect uh, any of the, uh, the lots that would be developable. It does affect the large remaining area uh, on site. So I just wanted to point out the information that I did find uh, and how I tried to um, address that in the plans. The only, the only, my only hesitation with naming it originally and it's the reason for such a long note on the plan is I don't want m uh, my plan to be used in the future um, as the benchmark for naming the river. Uh, I simply want to point out that uh, you know, this is the information that we found. This is why we have that information on the plan. I don't want Chris Berry and Barry surveying said it's the Elliott River, so it definitely is. I don't know that it is. Um, <laughs> So anyway, no. uh, so I think I think that's really uh, about it uh, for the, uh, the changes that we made to the plans. Unfortunately, lot areas and dimensions show up on every plan in the plan sheet. So I just reprinted the set for uh, for tonight's meeting. Um, I think the planner um, uh, reviewed the plans. Uh, I read his uh, review. Uh, didn't seem to be anything of too considerable note in there. So be happy to try and answer any questions that the board has. Appreciate that. Thank you. Um, and I did forward to the applicant. We had some town council uh, input on how oh, the deed or the covenant language, um, which I forward to the applicant. Uh, might have been just today or yesterday. It was today. Yeah, today. Uh, again, most usually that will come from the land use clerk back to the applicant. Uh, so I think there was just one question about the uh, insurance and insurance some insurance verbiage being added in there um, which I, think, I believe is, is working on but oh, we actually submitted it to the project attorney they addressed it and we've sent it back to already. okay yeah. so then I did send out yeah. I sent that back to the uh, town council today then that is why I sent back to them yes okay appreciate that sorry there was a uh, a lot of land use emails coming through today <laughs> um, so I did I did send that back to town council after I received it from you, just identifying what case it was for. Um, and then I believe the road agent made comment, you met with the road agent, and I believe they were satisfied with the uh, the end there, especially after it was clarified that the pine tree is not yours. That is down. Um, and we have the, the comment from the fire chief, which I believe just says private road. Um, Meyer subdivision, no further comment. The road proposed road name, I, we have to go back through our subdivision regs. Is that on the appendices of one of the pre-approved? If not, you would obviously be going to the select board for final approval of whatever name is established. And that, yeah, and that's fine. I didn't check the approved list. I can tell you that um, almost every resource already calls it the name that we're proposing to call yep. it. So if it's not on the list, then we'll certainly go to the select board or, or request uh, that they consider. Yeah. It's discussed a little bit. Yes, Captain Smith, or something like that. It was a little bit of education back to the within the town of, of road names. We don't approve road names. Mm -hmm. The final approval in private or town roads is always through the select board. Um, so. Is there any additional comment from the uh, board? Um, everything, yeah, everything I think I, the comments was addressed. I'm just kind of catching it now it's nothing that needs to be changed I think in my mind it, it could be a condition um, that the new lot line between the two lots that extends to the lake mm -hmm. that southeast bearing um, just because we it always comes up that 300 foot spacing just if you can just toss a so there's two segments over 400 feet okay just break it into three segments that's the same bearing so no issue there everything else looks good 
Mr. Spear, I just want to thank you for um, looking up um, the name of the river. Mm -hmm. um, those of us on the Conservation Commission had always assumed that this was the Elliott River mm -hmm. because it's the effluent from the northern part of the lake that is held back by Drowns Dam. Mm -hmm. So anything that comes from a large body of water, such as the Tecway Pond or Lake, is a protective stream by the state. Mm -hmm. Much in the same way as Dolliff Dam provides the effluent for Patekaway Lake River. River right. So right. one's on the south end, one's on the north end. Mm -hmm. And the reason we didn't see the name on the south side of Stevens Hill Road, because there wasn't enough room for them to print it. <laughs> so they printed it on the other side, but we just assumed it was mm -hmm. all Elliott River. Well, Look into that. So there's there's a few things that I found that you may want to look into, and I don't want to waste everybody's time tonight, but um, some of the tax maps say Mile Brook, some of them say Mill, um, and when you zoom in and out is when the change happens. And then there's a question as to whether or not where these connect, whether they connect down to uh, another brook named Mile uh, Brook further down. So uh, some clarity moving yeah. forward might yeah. be helpful. Very good. Thank you. I'm going to, um, it is a public hearing, so uh, I'll reopen the public hearing. If anybody would like to speak to, for, or against this application, please come forward. Seeing none, uh, I'm going to close the public hearing. It opened at 847, closed at 848 p.m. I should have said that for the other, because the minutes are being transcribed from the, uh, from the recording. All right, any additional comment from the board? If none, I, I think we're at this point in this application where a motion would, would be in order. Just to confirm, we can assume that the working out with the town council and stuff, they've already provided documents. We'll just work that out, final document. I think it's a condition, yeah. Final draft uh, reviewed and yeah. commented on by town council. Yeah. <clears throat> unless, unless you prefer before final action is taken on the board on this to w await town council's response i would think that a condition would be more in line yep yes sir last call no nobody i'll make a motion to approve case number 22-017 sub um, with standard conditions plan copies fees um, Bound, set, and certified, um, and mylar for recording, um, with the additional conditions of uh, just modifying that southeast bound, uh, bearing line to make sure there's no more than 300 feet between ba uh, bounds, and uh, just final town council review of the uh, HOA private road documents. So, second. stop sign. Stop sign. Do you want to add that? Sub. No, the stop sign. It's provided. It's on the. Okay, never mind. Oh yeah, yeah. It was it was a plan item, Adam. So. Thank yeah. you. So there was a motion by Mr. McKinnon. Was there a second? Yeah. yeah. Mr. Anderson by Mr. Anderson. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed. Uh, the motion carries seven zero. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Do I need to stick around for the Deberto discussion? Um. If you. Sure, I, I can't. Don't think it'll hurt. So we'll take that um, uh, next, and then we'll uh, we'll move into the conceptual. So we had uh, uh, so so case twenty two seventeen that should be we're we're done with that case for tonight. Uh, the next item, which is not appear on the agenda, but we had uh, sorry, which we had um, we had continued to, we had provided a continuation. To an approval, uh, a conditional approval for six months to tonight's date um, for case number 20-003 SUB, if I remember correctly. Uh, <laughs> that was um, Guile Road, uh, Mr. DeBerto. Mitchell Road. Mitchell Road. Mitchell Road. Mitchell. 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 Mitchell Road and Mr. DeBerto. Um, the continuation was to allow for a number of items. Uh, so we did get we did get verbiage. One of the items was 
was the language to be submitted to town council um, that has been submitted there was some comment back from town council which again there was a delay and we're getting that back to the applicant I submitted that to the applicant um, probably also today uh, so there were some some edits in there the town council had also requested additional um, items that apparently had not been forwarded at the time which was I think drainage and things like that so I had forwarded all that to town council and then forwarded the uh, the response the edits to um, the applicant um, so for that piece I would say is, is part of the condition um, but is, is on the board all other items I believe have been met but if um, Blair, do you have that that notice of decision up by any chance? Oh no, I don't. Okay. Um, I can summarize if you'd like, Mr. Chair. Mm -hmm. So um, it was essentially standard conditions uh, that needed to be met. The uh, just ensure that we had addressed all of the outstanding comments from CMA engineers, uh, mostly state permits, things of that nature. So we've. We've received all of our state permits. We had previously forwarded them to the planning office um, for uh, for copies. Uh, <clears throat> really, the one uh, largest item was that we were to provide an as-built of or a, an existing conditions plan of Mitchell Road for the town's use in the future. We had offered that up as as a part of the project. Uh, we had conducted that survey work, uh, and then uh, I had forwarded that. I had I had previously forwarded that on to the the planning office but again I forwarded it on today to ensure that you had received it so we feel as though we've met all of our conditions of approval I think the only one outstanding thing is just making sure that town council is happy with our documents uh, we would then print the mylar and have it here for signature I think that's the the topic of discussion um, May is that the CAD file that you forwarded yes that was supposed to go to CMA uh, whoever you'd like it to I think it was going to be provided to Sean and I recall that it might have been forwarded to Sean we could re-forward it but basically just for him to put in his files the CMA doesn't really need to hold it unless we kind of want to be the holder of it but yeah I mean unless there was the only reason I um, recommended to send it to CMA is I know they do some of your capital improvement design work so that was the only reason but whoever it goes to is doesn't as long as Sean has a copy, he may can have it too. But and I do recall that coming through a while back. I think you said that shortly after. Yeah. So I don't think there's any. Um, I don't know necessarily that there's any additional items for, for. I mean, anything for us to do on this. This was a continued. So we had already approved this case, had conditions of approval. We granted a six-month extension. Um, of those conditions to allow for some additional items to come in we have now received those um, we may not have final input from our town council but I believe that we could um, we're at a point that it's that we could move forward um, and, and indicate that we're not gonna that the mylar will not be signed until the final draft is received so mr. any, any idea so I don't Foresee that we would need a motion for anything like this, other than what well, we could probably take a motion just to just indicate that the conditions have been met. Yeah, I would think so. I, it's usually it's if, if a violation or something, some other action needs to be taken. But yeah, you can take when make a motion just to you know. I just say it's otherwise that so we give a <clears throat> motion uh, extension for three months just for the purpose of getting signatures on plans. But, uh, or we, we just say we'll just we'll just when it comes in, it comes in. We don't have to notice yeah. or anything like that. So. Normally, this is a little bit outside, so again, this falls to some of the vacancy and, and items with the timeline. Normally, we would not even have this on an agenda. We would not be talking about it during the public hearing. It's just we would have staff review. Yep, conditions have been met, and we have the mylar. We, we would sign it. Um, the only reason we're talking about it tonight is because obviously some things have, uh, you know, that we continued. We, we granted an extension, and then. Uh, the only item that's not back yet to us is because of the, the, the town, the town side of it, and that's just the uh, final draft of the uh, uh, HOA documents. Deeds. So you're looking for a motion to deem that all conditions have been met and 
I think we can do that in, in, in that the Miler will, will be signed once the final draft final of, council review. of those documents is, is uh, received and approved. What's that case number again? 20-003-SUB. If I have it correct, that's not right to you. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yeah, sorry. 20-002, right? 3. 3. 3. Dash SUB. SUB. So, Mr. Chairman, I move to, uh, <laughs> I guess, uh, Firm con conditional approval uh, based on um, <coughs> conditions that have been met. Um, waiting on town council response, I guess, uh, the right word for case 20 003 SUP. The only thing I'd add to that is just prior to Mylar being signed. I have to, to uh, finalize the Mylar signing. Second that. So the motion by Mr. Anderson and second by Ms. Mooney. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? I abstain because I don't know what you're talking about. Sure. <laughs> motion carries six zero uh, one. Hey. Drive Mitchell Just Road. so people know that I'm honest. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Drive Mitchell Road has been cleared, but that's all right. <laughs> We're on to the uh, other business of the night. We do have a conceptual application before us uh, from uh, Mr. Kevin Bassett. Uh, I don't think we have anything drawn out on this submitted to us. I sent it to Dale yesterday morning. That's probably why we didn't get yeah, it. That's probably <laughs> right. that's I reviewed what I got with Dale and Sean yesterday morning briefly. It wasn't and included in the packet. He said that he would. It is in the packet? In the. Have it by. The Kelly Delar sent it out. Did she send it? Yeah. It was a, a test. I saw an application. You have to have a copy with you. That's, I do. And I apologize. Apparently do. Just one? <laughs> He's saving trees. Thank you. A double sign. <laughs> uh, Kevin Bassett, 101 Shore Drive, owner of 25 Lamp. Um, fourth, fifth time I've been here conceptual. I'll try to try to make this brief and go from go from memory. Um, uh, basically, two things that we're here for: just a review of of uh, the subdivision that I'd like to do. Basically, big lots, uh, parting gift to my kids. Perhaps a couple small ones. Um, but still TBD. Need to do a survey. Need to do perp test and 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 figure out if if they're buildable lots. Bottom line. Um, these are the, the big lots you're talking about to make sure that those big lots are buildable, or are you talking about these small lots to make sure they're buildable? Well, now, well, which are you? <laughs> that was my going in position before the Warren article and the roads. Now that there are uh, town roads, there are smaller lots, which I believe are now have to be individual lots, and there's at least two or three of them. Um, so those need to be surveyed. Don't know how big they are. Don't know if I can put, you know, two two acres or one four acre or three point eight or whatever they are. So the pictures just sort of depict a sort of a, a worst case um, um, <coughs> subdivision where there might be some little lots in and around three bigger lots instead of four bigger lots because of the road worn out. Um, and then the second thing is. Um, behind the dam is some unbuildable land and and again before the road split it that would have been current use on one of those larger you know, 10 acres another seven eight whatever behind the behind the dam and um, are you talking on which side of Dol you talking about behind the dam as behind the dam on Dolph. where the rivers flying on Dolph? Correct. on that side of the Dolph? The lake side, or because Dolph goes up, and then you have your side. That's behind the dam where the river and, 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 okay. and the sluway comes up. Okay. Yep. So um, the last couple meetings and the couple meeting notices in that package too. But I was asking to make sure that that could all could be, if owned by the same owner, um, easement, and such that that could be contiguous and be uh, used as, as current use. It'd be a good use of that that land that's not 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 built. 
obviously keep that in current use that it is in current use now. So that's that's what we're there. So the um, river is the only thing that divides those two parcels? No, I own up on one side of the river. The slough way comes out and it sort of is all wetland in there, especially yeah. in the spring. Um, then there's Dollar Dam Road. Then there's a parcel that goes on the other side of Dollar Dam Road. Because of, land, because of the land, because of the because of the Warren article, that that larger piece is no longer a 12-acre piece, or we don't expect it to be. And so <laughs> I said, "Wow, I, you know, if I can't put that in current use and put a house on it. I would like to have the contiguous." And there's a, uh, a letter there from Chris back a few months ago. Uh, indicating that that just because there's a road through there it doesn't mean that two parcels owned by the same person with this with an easement that it can be contiguous and considered current use so that's that's, that's in that package. So, so that's one thing that I've been asking the last two three times I've been here I got his response and if there's any issue I would like you to explore that before I go any further with council and certainly zoning board and and 32 abutters and et cetera, et cetera. With that, well, it costs a lot of money. Um, with that, <laughs> um, unless there's more questions for me, I can relinquish the floor, Mr. Franklin and uh, who would be doing a survey and we're, from my perspective, I'm trying to get him in front of you so he knows what you need for a survey so we don't come back and visit you six or eight times. Okay. <laughs> Got it. So, for the, the, the packet that you'd handed out, which, what are we looking at for the con actual conceptual what, moving forward? Which one of these is it? Is it A20283? My name is Jim Franklin. I'm okay. a surveyor. I, I just have a question. Have you all received the information that I've received? It has no. A no. number of pages? No. Not so yet. so I, I can only suggest that it may be premature to talk much discussion on this until you've had this information so you can look at it. Yeah, well, I mean, we can, I, I think we can, for the sake of I think some of it we can time, discuss. And, and <laughs> since this isn't new to us. Um, okay. But, and again, it's conceptual, so it's high level and non binding. So, you, you all are here tonight, so I'd like to give you a chance to speak What's towards the best this. Case? And, and if, I could, if I could point, this one here is TBD after you're going to do a survey and a first test to even know if that's a buildable lot of Same with these. This could be more than four, could be less than four. To split it in half and half two. So, this one, and this one, and this one, even you probably see that one. Are all TBD. Hmm. This is what I've been showing you since 2019, mm -hmm. and but the road has affected me because now these have to be separate lots. That is just a picture of a proposed power line going uh, okay. up to my three kids' front. Yep. Okay. What you guys know, we'll pass them down to the other guys. So I was trying to read through some of it, but I think the, there was the original question. I think you had the question, and I, I don't think I was at the first. I couldn't make the meeting you came to when the first time. Conceptual. Um, the question about owning land on either side of the road being contiguous. That came up in our discussion with town council, like when we were looking for general guidance of like what scenarios when a town accepts a road that runs through like. Currently, I mean, there's a lot of property in the lakes where the road just runs through it and you own on both sides. What happens when the town now has rights to that road? And I think what my understanding with town council was that it's, they can't now say it's a bisecting because you've always owned. It's different if you're proposing, and this is, I'm sure you're familiar, there was a case where we were talking about that of proposing new land on the other side of a road that wasn't there before. But if you already have a parcel it's bisected those two the either side of the road can still be seen as contiguous that was at least the feedback that we received from council he did throw the disclaimer that it certainly needs to be looked at in the, the grand scheme of um, if you're gonna throw lot lines and break it up but if there's existing land that is on both sides of what you deem the road right I mean it's that it could Chris's be words there um, to find you know it, it can be a road that bisects <coughs> it, it could be other things and 
and his his email to me and possible others as well. Okay. Uh, somewhere. And it's on the other side of that page that you have. Oh, okay. Chris's, no, I saw it. Somewhere. Input or, or some of that guidance. Or supposedly it, that's the answer that I was asking for last time about this issue. And some of that guidance, is, I mean, that's assessing. That's why it may not be yeah. the purview of this board to be able to answer it because it's an assessing matter versus, but so in general with this board, when you look at subdivisions and things of that nature, um, you know, making lots, it, we can do things like we wouldn't want to approve a plan where it was proposing to put land on two sides of a road, but if that's the existing condition, that's different. So if we're making something, we'd look at, are we making a non-conforming use more non-conforming, a non-conformity more non-conforming? Are we exacerbating that um, or not? So that would be one thing we look at. And another item I'm just gonna address, normally on the subdivision regs, we have that we can hold two conceptuals before, we, before fees are charged. Um, again, I think we have some leeway on that as the board whereas this is a pretty unique situation that was created through a town vote um, and that's why we've kind of allowed you know because there was obviously town input that was needed for the applicant to be able to guide them uh, yeah. to here tonight so you know my opinion is that we're fine with having this additional conceptual again these are non-binding so I'd agree. Um, I, I have I have a question regarding that conceptual. Is there a time limit? I think in the subdivision regs, I think it's it's two within sixty days is, is supposed to be. Well, well, does and then after that sixty days, are we prohibited from having more? Oh, is there a time limit? Oh, that's a good sorry. question. Can <laughs> we can we have ten in a year? <laughs> to work a system, the, just yeah. for example. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I, I think that's. Up. And the reason I ask is because this is. This is unique. This is not a typical subdivision. These aren't typical town roads, nor private roads. Sure. This is all, I would suspect, brand new, to the, at least to myself and to the board. Mm -hmm. How the, uh, and uh, so I think, I, my opinion is that we need to have at least two more meetings with the board before we make any formal application. It, yeah. th during those, those um, informational or conceptual, we'd like to provide um, additional information. Okay. They say, okay, this is this is fine, but it doesn't really address what's happening. It says, yes, we're creating these lots, but I think it's reasonable to um, to ask, where are the roads? What will be the lot sizes? And what's the status of the roads? You know, I, I don't have the minutes or the 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 warrant article. I don't have the wording of the warrant article that said these are now town roads. It's vague. <laughs> yeah. there, so what we could say though is, and I guess we'd have to figure out from John the interim Trump TA, but there is a document that I know Chris did put together of collecting as much information on any of the roads that he yeah. could. Yeah. That may be of some benefit, but it I know will. this area, there was some questions as to if there were sections that were even Technically, part of I think there's a Lamprey Drive discussion, right? That was, yeah. Well, that's still up. Remember, right. so even before we go anywhere, <clears throat> the Lamprey and Drive E911 has not been settled. Not just a... <laughs> so if if so these before are... you can go subdividing there, make sure that might be something you want to be <laughs> clarified of what that road will. This is what it's going to be named for plans and anything because it might stay the same. It might change. The road on the other side might change. So a lot of the land you have might have different yeah. road frontage or different names of road frontage. <clears throat> well, the phrase of most traveled way also came up in these discussions. Uh, yes, yeah. and part of it, so I, I believe the, the prior conversations with, in with town administration and, and the road agent was that during these processes, sometimes that's where this is gonna get set. This is where the, these are gonna get surveyed. Um, the right of ways are gonna be, you know, Added to the specified width from the town, and then the in, ends of it are going to be. I think that was a question you'd ask, Mr. Bassett. Asked, you'd asked us before was, you know, well, where does it end? Like, do I just put a stake in the road? Say, well, that's the end of it. And yeah. um, 
And I believe there was comment back from the town administrator on that. Just to point out some too, from my experience, when you do do a survey on these roads, you probably should use the idea of a new subdivisions width. So when you survey, don't survey to where the road is dirt now. You might want to set that everything back 10 feet on both sides because you're doing a subdivision. Mm -hmm. New subdivisions have new rules, 25 foot width, stuff like this. Yep. That way for future expansion and everything, we're not encroaching on lots because you're going to be going to ask to make small lots. So the town's going to have a right to ask to make the road. Not saying you have to make the road, but if for the future that there's there's room to expand without going out to other people's properties. Yeah, and that, that is within the subdivision, right? So and that you know, you know what I'm saying, Kev? Two cases recently where the the applicant went from the road center and then they, they set the lot, new lot line basically, you know, whatever the right of way width would have yeah. been from their side. And they didn't control the other side where you know in these cases you're probably controlling both sides, so you're actually would be setting yeah. you know, defining the, the, the right away that way um. those are important that's in lieu of if via plan or deed research you do find that for some reason there is a section that is defined as an easement um, one of the things that came back from council was that via I think it was via case law if there's an easement on a plan and say the road was because of say natural features built elsewhere there's kind of the town assumed that road and if that easement was supposed to be where the road was they do have the you know in the ball the town has rights to both where the road is but also where that easement was they don't always line up but I, my understanding is that a lot of these don't have any defined easement and that's where in terms of the survey side it's going to be and we see that like you said we've seen um it, it's happened on a case that's in review right now where they're proposing a right away which basically is a minimum of 36 ideally 50 um, and it's you're setting that right away based on what's there now it's obviously not gonna be a cl as clean of a right away as we'd like but hopefully not have a chalked up <coughs> serpentine road. I think that's probably the biggest thing is seeing what's going to be proposed for a right away width and then I think unique to this one I'm not sure is it Indian Run where on a lot of the maps it just kind of just starts it's like a tree branch or, or like a tree right it just branches off that's probably one of those areas where there's got to be a primary traveled dead end way to I don't even know if it's Indian Run anymore but um, so this, that road didn't change we're not gonna have this big triangle that we're gonna say hey you got to give that as the right away because that makes no sense but we'll make it a park <laughs> yeah, I'm but, sorry. but a consideration for the dead end was we did have a case. I can never remember the road name where it was the one where they relinquished part of that was part of the recent article where they relinquished part of the road, and then they came where are you in, located in town. It's on one of the lake roads. I can't remember the names of all these. Do you know the one where the, they then provided though an easement for a turnaround, um, because it's. As part of a subdivision, we can't just have a 40 foot end right away oh, that, that was ends. Cahill. That's Cahill Lane. Cahill Lane. Yes. And that was one where, for a number of reasons, they relinquished a portion of it to get some frontage. So each lot actually had frontage. But then they also did provide an easement for a turnaround. Who knows if they'll ever build it, the town will ever build a turnaround. But I imagine on something like this, because it is now a town road, we'd be looking at access at the end. So it's not just just ends I'm sure it's an issue and has been an issue for plow trucks in several areas for years but that, that's a whole before we even get to that stage because well certain, that's what there's the, certain part roads I mean, are not even plowing that we may should plow that are part of the, that's all right but in terms of asking for the whole of what's going to be on the surveys we can have the conceptuals going back and forth but there's going to become a time where well I just do we have to see something on a plan to there's, say yeah. this looks like it when we come back lines, yeah. when we come back and that's what my question is the time period um because this is this is um this is a lot of survey work and if this was a 60 days i can't guarantee that we'll have all the survey work done necessary to make any type of formal presentation in 60 days my suspicion is that it's probably going to be more like spring mm -hmm. and at that point we would have definite information <laughs> yeah so at that point i mean when, you know, it sounds like you'd be more at the design review phase at that at that point, which again, obviously has a different cost because then it's a butter notification and, and everything. Um, 
but we can get real feedback on but we can the give, plan. Yeah, we'll yes. have a lot more to give feedback, yeah. plus it could be an engineer. I, I have a question about the, the roads. These are, these are now town-maintained roads. As such, do we need to petition the Board of Selectmen to lay out these town-maintained roads no. as a public highway? Or can they remain as easements for the public to use? Or are they going to be limited easements for people who live around the lake to use? To my knowledge, any part that was public part of the Warren article became a public way. Became a class okay. five. Public way. I'd have to reread this specific Warren article. But it's a class class five yeah, roadway, which is a public class, okay. class five roadways, roadways okay. were accepted as. We, okay. But again, yeah, there was when those Warren articles were written, there was no and so that's as as is where they, are, they are, are at the time of the Warren article. Just Correct. as is. <laughs> we're, we we as the town are not spending money to define where the road is. We're only telling you where the road looks to be today. Yep. Is where the road is today. Yep, that's what Kevin's hired us to do. Yeah, that's to exactly. Make, pre that's present plans to you saying this is where the road is. Right. Yep. And it's going to be X amount of width. Yes. Some sections of that road can go narrow, some sections can go so maybe, real wide. Yes. But you need to clarify all that. For we the will. Town. Thank you. We will. Yep. The, um, uh, let's see. Our intention is when we do a boundary survey on this, we will be surveying the entire parcel everything that Kevin owns there. And likewise, that will mean all the abutters parcels. We survey up to the abutters parcels. In some cases, we may have to extend, like we did when we came in for the lot line adjustments. We surveyed from the lake up to Kevin's property, and then we proposed to have the lot line adjustment. So those plans are here. And I suspect that we will probably need to do the same in portions of this especially all the lots that are uh, that front on the lake that we haven't addressed before. Part of that, um, the wetlands, because these are large lots, some of them are large lots, I suspect that the wetlands will need to be identified to flag them in the field, survey their location, because they are zones and there are setbacks from those wetlands that you have to hold to. So that's also what we're proposing to do. And um, as Kevin had mentioned before, our initial proposal is that the roads, the center of the traveled way, I will use that term, traveled way, will become the boundary of the lots. And a 50 foot, say 50 foot wide easement, so they're 25 feet on each side of that center line, will be an easement as opposed to when the selectmen lay out a road, when they, when they are petitioned to lay out a road, they lay it out, they take the property, and they give money to the people they took the land from. And in order to avoid that, these strips of land, the road, within the road, will be privately owned, rather than strips of land that Kevin owns or strips of land that the town owns. That's where I'm a little gray. Are these going to be strips of land that the town will own so that he will actually have to prepare a deed as any other town road? I don't think that was ever the intent because of that issue. Okay. Like we, we've seen cases where they are presenting land, but it's land that's owned by the applicant already. Yeah. Yep. But yes, in a case where I think the underlying land is completely owned by somebody, yeah, we don't need a, a taking situation where now you're giving a fee in lieu of, okay. of the taking. Okay. Because we've had we have had applications we've looked at where um, the the Cahill Lane, that's an easement to the benefit of the town yep. at the proper width with the cul de sac radius yep. and stuff like that. And it's, uh, where's the limits where are the limits of the right of way it, or, or the individual ownership on that Cahill Lane? Are they up to the sidelines or are they to the center? No, the easement straddles like okay. the line. We yeah. did the same in Deerfield on a private road. Yeah. Um, that was 15 years ago. And when we came back in with another submission for a different piece of property, the planning board said no. So I just wanted to get some clarification before we went through that whole design process. Um, soil mapping, are these on small lots? If it's a two acre lot, I would suspect that the board would need to see the typical topography, soil mat, soils, 
test pits, things like that, to prove that it is a buildable lot <laughs> and that all the town setback requirements based on soils would apply to those lots. Yeah, for any new any new lot that is being created, yeah. you have to show that somewhere on that lot it meets that the requirements of yeah. this uh, build, the, the lot, 4K, buildable the yeah. area. Four K with two pits in the four K thirty thousand square foot area, four K area. Yeah, the minimum lot size, right? The minimum buildable lot size within the lot. You have to show that a lot, a lot a lot envelope could fit yeah. somewhere. Okay. So yes, yeah, so obviously on large parcels, um <laughs> of time to the extent it's not the whole Parcel may not be surveyed. There can be waivers requested for contours and things like that on the plan for areas that are far. But you know, there's just, there is always a section shown where um, a, a lot envelope could go. Especially with two, where we're talking larger lots, there's probably going to be multiple places where you have a thirty thousand square foot contiguous area. But I think we'd be looking for where's the intent to if you're going to build a home or show a home lot. Show the 30k area. You can show some more than 30k if you'd like, but hmm. not 30k here, 30k here. I mean, in theory you could, but it's the yeah, I think the intent there is show where the 30k is, so the 4k stakes, with the test pits. Okay. We'll put stakes down where we think we want the three houses. Exactly. Because so. generally, when they when you go to get a building permit, they're looking back at the plan to say, okay, yeah. well, this is where you identified that you put the house. Yeah. That's what was approved. Yeah. If yeah. They're outside that. It's it's a it could be an issue. Um, and then you know proposed driveways too uh, on the plan on any plan showing where the driveway would be because that's generally also uh, proposed utilities yeah and with sub new subdivisions it's usually underground utilities that, that are required think about. underground on a so traditional in case, subdivision in this case though if it's an extension of a power utility within a town roadway or then that could follow. Yeah, it's a little, a little overhead, easy. but yep. private, probably, yeah, probably, private law or probably along the roadway. That would be fine because you're not creating a new road. You're not, you're not creating the new road. Right. But usually within to the to the lots themselves to the new, you know, any new home that was being built, it's usually underground utilities. I know one of the subdivision or the one we did um, for White's Grove down there. There was a utility line that went <clears throat> went through the property, and there was no recorded easement for it. I know that property. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Wow. Yeah. It's crazy. Really? Yeah. I know it really well. Yeah. Um, I have I have no more questions. Again, the time period is. Yeah, the, the easement question about the, the the road and the definition. We've seen it both ways recently, yep. and I'm trying to remember what pushed someone one way versus the other. Some it was they just said, "No, we're going to put our we're saying the right of ways here to here, and we're setting our lot line yep. there." Others have gone to the middle and then done the same thing, like you said. Um, you know, either you did an easement to the town and conveyed land to the town as part of the subdivision, which then has to get a, uh, accepted by the select board. Um, but either way, that right of way width establishes then your setbacks from that point. Yes, yes. I, yeah, I recall. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have any more questions, Kevin. Neither do I. So you'd mentioned the surveying, so you'd be surveying the back of all the abutting lots, but not the actual full, like every single. Well, if there are if there are conflicts. Conflicts, yes. Yes. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Yep. There are cases where there may we may find conflicts. Survey these. Yep. There'll be a few monuments out there. I imagine. Yeah. yeah there are. We we added that, quite a few. If you had land that was smaller in size on some of these parts that got broken up um, into multiple fractions, you know, could you look at? Uh, uh, you know, some kind of additional lot line adjustment where it's granting some of this land to the, the smaller lots that are on the lake, you know, as a, as a solution, but these are pretty large. Well, yeah. I'm assuming that. We did that. <laughs> I'm assuming they're pretty large parcels. Um, we yeah. did that last time. Yeah, one of those shows the four <laughs> lot lines we've done to date. Yeah. yeah. Um, there is another uh, neighbor who has just asked uh, for a lot line adjustment. Uh, there's no road impact on that one, and it's, and it's a small. Point one, so yep. um, they may do that in, in the future. Which I think is a good thing for them, the town, etc. Anything to define what the town has, I think is a good <laughs> thing. So. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, thank you so much. Mm -hmm.
I'll make sure this goes into the uh, the item. The item. Yeah. Okay. Um, my my item proposed warrant articles. I did not see it printed out. Um, I think I printed out a copy for myself. At this point, I may have lost my notes on it. Basically, just just a reminder that we had a bunch of items that we want to make sure we get to. It's another late night for us. Um, I don't want to ask more of everybody. My suggestion would be to make sure that we start hitting the deadlines for these is that um, if we're going to work on anything this year that we do do a separate workshop just for this. I'll try to keep it quick as possible and then get something uh, on the agenda for public hearings if and when we decide to move forward with anything. Um, I'm cognizant of the holidays and everything else. We have one meeting this month. I would suggest potentially next Wednesday is a, is a date, since we do Wednesdays all the time, um, at 7 p.m. or 6.30 p.m. even, if, if people want to be a bit earlier. And again, hopefully not have that be a 9.30, 10 o'clock night. That's a good idea, the 16th, 6.30? I have a previous yeah. meeting to go to. And we can. So I just want to know I won't be here. Yeah, and, and uh, I, I think I. And I don't want to exclude anybody. The 16th or the 17th? What are you talking about? The 16th. 16th. So, so doing having a, having a um, so I'm proposing that we that we have a uh, a workshop specifically to address the action items that we have not had a chance to address: the subdivision regulations updates and the cleanups and, and clarifying what those are, and either pick it a date or to do a public hearing and move forward with those. Any proposed zoning changes for warrant articles, you know go through the language that's out there right now, clean it up, and come up with a draft that we can send to council for review and then get on a public hearing. Those kind of items that are under our purview that we just have not had the time to, uh, we've not had a chance to get to with all our other caseload. And of course, if you can't make it, there's, um, I think I sent everything that we had so far that I could remember. Uh, you can always you know, provide comment to myself and uh, Mr. McKinnon and to Blair, and we'll make sure that um, one of us gets it on, gets it incorporated into the feedback. I'll be one of them. I have a, a work meeting that night, another planning board, but um, I'll make sure to review and provide comment. I read through the, the aquifer stuff that Blair sent around. One of the items, I'm sorry, I asked was from a grant that came through yep. SRPC uh, that we were included in. Um, to tighten up or clarify our aquifer protection district, so that one's obviously more robust. Um, and that will probably rather discussion is, you know, can we clean that up at all to, to shorten the length of it uh, so we're not inundating voters with um, multiple page things, but we'll, uh, we'll get into that part then. May I suggest that we look at the 17th instead? Because three people can't make it. That'll be the Thursday. Doesn't matter for me. I'll be out of the state. <laughs> I won't be able to make Thursday because that's a budget meeting, so I won't be at oh, that one either. Right, I can't make mind. it either. So I'm just having a good time, John. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, because I was going to agree to that. And right. I have a budget meeting. You too. have a budget, exactly. Yeah, you too. So I'll so make sure more everybody. volunteers sure in town. Do we have enough Thursday? <laughs> yeah. Pinajou would have a quorum. It sounds like one, two, three. One. Two, three. Yeah, I'm just like an extra. I don't know if Sherry so would be able to more important than you, actual official real members. Get that. I don't think well, we well, need. You're going to do it. Tuesday, Thursday, Wednesday, Monday. Wednesday, Sunday? Wednesday the 16th. So we we try to keep everything on Wednesdays the 16th. At, we're proposing 6:30 instead of 7 though to try to get in earlier, get everybody out earlier. And again, I do not expect that to be. More than all an the hour Thursdays to now to the end of the world are gone. Okay. They're all. And some of the Tuesdays. Well, would anybody like to make a motion that we do a workshop for that night? Mr. So, Chair, I move we have a workshop on November 16th, um, starting at 6.30 p.m. to review um, amendments to the zoning ordinance in 2023. And subdivision regs? And subdivision regs, so. Is there a motion? Is there a second? A second. 
There's a motion by Ms. Mooney, a second by Ms. Anderson to hold a workshop meeting from the planning board uh, next Wednesday, November 16th at 6.30 p.m. Any uh, further discussion? We'll see if I can do my best to get some comments out. Too. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Sure. Aye. 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 Uh, anybody opposed? Uh, motion carries 7 0. Mm -hmm. Again, if you can't make it, please just let me know. And then also, just any comments, please uh, send through. And I, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Public comment. This is the yeah. time of night we reserve for public comment. Uh, tonight, so we'll move on from that. We had three sets of minutes um, to approve. I don't know that these went out to everybody. So, what I'm going to propose is that we table those for tonight. And you know, it pushes it to December for approval, and I'll make sure that the most recent draft copies get everybody for that night. And I sent out um, additional edits, right? Because I received them today and sent them back, yeah. So, so I think it would, it would be best. Uh, so, we're going to table those. Um, select board staff member updates, uh, Ms. Jones. No, nothing, Ms. Davies. Nothing, Mr. Anderson. Oh, I. I I promised Sue I'd get this out, and I finally just found it. I had to dig through emails, but the uh, it was something I had run across that was uh, about uh, welcoming and safe understanding and preventing hate-based activity. So this happened already. It was October uh, 6th, uh -huh. but um, it is through um, New Hampshire Listens, so you probably, if anybody wanted to find that, they probably could get info through them. Mm -hmm. Could and you send a link though, Gary? So can you send it, a link to that? It's, well, it's right on SRP's, SR All right, I'll check it out. DC's uh, website on under bits and pieces. Uh, bits and pieces. This was on September 23rd. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Warren. So here's the reason I just, uh, great election yesterday. You know, as long as it was for the day, the turnout was outstanding. We had just under 3,000 people. Wow. You know, at, a, at, a, at the beginning of the day, we, read, we had about 3,500 registered voters. The, um, so to get to 3,000 was great. The we new, got 3,000 people? Just under. Wow. The uh, first time voters was like I've never seen. I mean, maybe the last time I saw that was probably back <laughs> two presidential elections ago, I mean, the stack had to be like this big. It was, yeah. the line was, it was incredible. It was great to see the people were actually doing that. And everything went really smooth for the whole day. Spirits were good. Time was fast for most people, so. I was shocked. Again, I was there, I chose the worst time to go, like 5.30. And yeah, it was, it was, it was that it was bad. Fast, yeah. Right. So I think well, actually, right. it was, I got lucky. If you were A through C at that time, it was about 40 people. But. Right, that's so totally sweet, <laughs> right. Yeah, that's no story. Yeah. But so really get, thank everybody that helped, all the uh, volunteers, all the people that do it. Uh, reminder, there are more elections coming up. We do have our town elections uh, and stuff coming. So anybody that feels like they want to volunteer, uh, it is, you know, we can use extra help. So mm -hmm. if it's something you want to do for supporting voting, that's great. Um, going back to the select board, uh, the last meeting we had, we have another meeting on Monday, uh, which will be beneficial to hear. We do have somebody in mind that is uh, accepted uh, the position for our land use clerk uh, to help out this. Uh, she does work for the town, so that's pretty much it. But I'll go over details, and um, we should just we're going to talk about that quickly on the the meeting on Monday. But it should be a finalized <laughs> that going forward we will have this position filled. Uh, for the assistance on the board. Uh, so we're very fortunate that it happened this quick and this good. So, but we'll get into more details when that actually gets finalized. Uh, uh, going back, the select board budget season, as we all know, uh, is coming up. And we've talked about that before here. So we talked to the last meetings. The town's going to be, you know, fighting hard to do the best we can to, you know, tighten limit the, the amount and tighten the budget. Um, we gave a lot of raises out this year, which were desperately needed. <laughs> and even though we did that, we are still <laughs> below the, the standard that's out there. Yeah. Uh, and that was one of the subjects in conversations that we had at the last select board meeting. Uh, real eye-opening, you know, and especially for people at home, home to see all the services that we offer and the people providing those services and what they actually get 
what they get paid. Um, we should be very thankful for these people that are working for us, uh, for what they're doing, you know, compared to what they might be doing for other towns. So on that note there, uh, we do have a meeting on Monday. And uh, right now on the budget committee, since I'm sitting there too, uh, we are on our, our default budgets is what we're talking about right now. So this Thursday meeting tomorrow night will be on the default budget for school. And well, we did talk about the town one. Um, so the next meetings after that will become the more interesting. Um, no budget. Here with, in terms of new positions, there is some TA positions also moving forward. We're using. Uh, we have applicants that are being vetted yep. uh, right now. And then we actually might have some, again, not just speaking openly, we might have some other applicants that might be coming from sources we do not know. So let's just say that. So Mysterious. we hopefully. If everything goes right, maybe we'll have a TA to start at the beginning of the year. Great. Um, yeah, nothing. I know uh, we'll keep tabs on the budget committee schedule. I know we kind of pushed pushed our budget committee presentation per se. Um, we're so going we'll to work till there's like more uh, recommended. I guess it comes from the select board more so. We're gonna we'll speak to you when we think it's recommended for when we want you to come present yeah. in front of the bu the budget committee. Yep. Yeah, we're trying so to do we'll that. let you ahead of time know when we're ready with the, the budget and then we'll, lump we'll bring the staff in that we feel will be necessary to present their case mm -hmm. for our finalized budget. Yep. Yep. Uh, on that, uh, uh, the calendar, I know you see you have it there. Are you plan to talk about that? Yeah. Then nothing. <laughs> I, I, I did attend the, uh, so first of all, uh, what Mr. Morin talked about, about uh, staff and, and town staff and everything um, you really notice it if how much individuals are doing once there's a vacancy uh, and it falls to other people and or yourself um, so I cannot say thank you enough to Kelly Dallaire, Rachel so Dallaire. Uh, Rachel, Rachel's been doing our minutes for us so as we go through them we'll probably notice she's been doing them from uh, the recordings so there's probably a way to tighten those up and give her some guidance on that um, and then Kelly Dallaire has been monitoring the land use email and has been been on top of her other full-time job here and has been doing an amazing job for for us so thank you to, to them and everybody else that's in town as well i did attend the october 31st select select board meeting uh, and spoke towards our our budget um as mr morton indicated you know we do plan on being in front of the budget committee at some point um just to be able to speak towards our part a little bit more um and that date is to be determined it's going to be it's it's once the select board finalizes their their budget proposed budget uh, it's time for us to set our calendar for, for next year i picked the dates quickly from what i can tell i picked obviously the second and fourth wednesday of every month um, excluding november and december um, with a deliver application deadline being the third monday of the preceding month unless a holiday was there and then i moved it to the the Tuesday after um, so what I'm gonna do is if that sounds right to everybody mm -hmm. I'm gonna send this back to Kelly she will actually create a nice little calendar like our current one and then we can vote on it at the next meeting um, town report write-up is due uh, normally the land use court would kind of draft that up for us um, so we'll be looking to have that written up I don't know if anybody would like to do that or if not I will draft something and uh, send it out for, for comment from this board just what else we can add into it uh, Mr. Morin stole the thunder that we hired a land use clerk so that's well not official not officially yet but it, fingers crossed that it goes well um, and I think that's it anything else I have is a follow-up item from Mr. McKinnon and Blair that I'll touch base with you two before we uh before we end the night <coughs> <clears throat> I just did some quick math, John, and uh, voter turnout was close to 86%. It's good. It is Incredible. not to say I'm really proud of being a resident of Nottingham. It's very good. And that's all I have to say. Uh, I'm actually all set. Yeah. All right.
Uh, in that case, any further business, everybody? If not, a motion to adjourn would be great. I so move. Second, anyone? Second. All in favor, so stand gone. up and leave. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate your time again. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. So, the motion was Ms. Mooney and second by uh, Ms. Jones. Everybody approved it. <laughs>